Welcome to the Sharp Club. So happy to see you this evening. Yes, it is 9 p.m., a little bit after 9 p.m. on the East Coast, but it's Monday, which means it's not 7 p.m. It's got to be 9 p.m. And with this, whatever, daylight savings, is it really 9? Is it 10? Is it 8? I don't know. Anyway, my clock says 9. I'm saying it's 9. If you don't like it, I don't know where you are. But we are on the East Coast, and I'm glad that you are here. We are talking tonight about something which I think is very interesting. It is the criminal justice system in America. There are a lot of people who are happy and people who are unhappy, both about the system and how it works. And I brought a distinguished panel with me today. I mean, maybe distinguished, kind of distinguished-ish comedian and podcast host, the man himself, Adam Nutter. How are you, sir? Good. No one's ever used distinguished and my name in the same sentence. So thanks. That was cool. Uh, first there we last. go. See? <laughs> you have become distinguished now. <laughs> Just hang out with me more, you'll be distinguished. Yes. Damn. All right. And an amazing activist, someone who has actually changed my mind on many things as we've had discussions. And she even changed my mind through Facebook posts, which is pretty challenging, but she has done it. She's been on my show before. Happy to have her again. Uh, great activist, the one, the only Kirsten Tynan. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Excellent. <laughs> And I want to, the next person I want to bring on, some of you may not know this, and you libertarians are going to love, love, love this that I'm going to give you. Do you know that when the IRS takes you to court, they have a 99.75 conviction rate? Did you know that, Adam? Nope, that's the, insane. That is insane. <laughs> but there's someone who has beaten them, the 0.25%, <laughs> the man himself, a truly distinguished gentleman, a friend of mine, criminal defense attorney, extraordinaire, the man himself, Vinu Varghese. How are you, sir? Hey, Larry, you should also have added that you actually helped us beat the IRS. So for all your fans, Larry was part of the team that beat the IRS at trial. This is true. I was part of the team, but you let us do this, brother. Without you, it doesn't happen. So amazing, awesome, Appreciate giving you. you all the credit. So with this in mind, what I want to bring up is what people who have been talking about this online as I posted this, most people were mad about crime, right? Crime is up, crime is you know going crazy. How are we gonna fix this criminal system? You have half of the people saying, it's not tough enough, lock them all away, right? Put them, lock them all up. Another part going, no, th this is completely the wrong answer. And Adam, I know you were, you were a cop in the past. Then you were both a prosecutor too, right? You've, you've been on both sides of this. Is crime up, and, and, and what should we be doing about it? I don't know if crime's up. Uh, I mean, it seems like it is, right? Because, like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a little skewed. Uh, you see mm -hmm. people, like, you, I saw, like, a pedophile got released on, like, his own recognizance, but, like, people for, like, tax evasion, like you guys know, will get in jail for, like, 50 years. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> so true. it's, like, I, I yep. think it's just, you know, I feel like it's like a progressive turn in, 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 in like the criminal justice system. And they're like, let everybody go except for white collar crimes or anything that nonviolent that shit stays, but anybody else let's <laughs> let back on the streets. And that's what I feel like is happening. So like a lot of these repeat offenders just going out and just doing crazy shit. Cause usually there's just yep. also crazy people. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's my take on I it. I do see that, right? I mean, you do see this stuff on TikTok. You see this stuff on Twitter. You see this stuff on Facebook. You see it on YouTube, right? You see it. Guys go out, do the bad thing, come back, do something bad again. Or worse, um, what is it? Isn't there a couple of stores now that are leaving cities because of too much shoplifting? I, I live here in Queens, and there was a there was a like a Walgreens or something like that. I forgot what it was, but the people literally said, "I'm leaving because we were shoplifted out of business," and that was mm -hmm. on their wall. So I, I I'm with you, Adam. It feels like maybe I, I mean I don't know the stats, but it feels like it's bad. Well, the police commissioner was on New York One, Kishan Sewell. Uh, within the last week saying crime is down and uh, she was um, talking about the numbers of certainly it's appears some violent crimes have decreased but other crimes have gone through the roof you know particularly the things you're talking about larry uh, with shoplifting and things like that things that are quality of life i think the feeling is in your lifelong new yorker i i've been here since i was you know a baby so 
you know, it's the feeling that you have walking the street late mm-hmm. at night. Do you feel, especially here, you know, if you're in Manhattan, like during, you know, I, I went to college here and, and when you were in college and, you know, you had to watch your back. I mean, I, right. I was in the, in, the, in the 90s, in the Dickens days, you know. So after that, Giuliani came in, cleaned up, whether rightly or wrongly, however he did it. Bloomberg continued that. And the thing was, you could walk around, take the subway at four in the morning yeah. and not worry. I, I walk now because I just see it. I mean, the, 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 you know, this is this crime. There's also the homelessness. There's the, so many problems that are on the streets. And look, I'm a criminal defense attorney, but, you know, maybe some of your libertarian friends won't like this. And I consider myself a libertarian philosophy. I am a law and order guy. And so, you know, there's so much here. Particularly when you when you see things and and you see like human feces everywhere and you got all these problems and these these shelters that are opening up and you got breeding grounds. I mean, right? I'm at two wall right here, uh, basically at the base of my building, hundred Broadway technically, is um, they shut down. I mean, there were videos and of all these things of people just walking in there taking stuff. And yep. you know, you, you, and you have to deal with that as a as a mayor, as a city, and and I'm not sure Adams is up to task. You know, so yeah, I, I think I, there are a lot I'm, of problems. I'm disappointed with him. I am. I'm disappointed with him. I'm a, Kirsten, I'm a come on, tell me. I know yeah. you're going to tell me I'm wrong. I I am. There's only so long my emotions won't show on my face. <laughs> I knew. I knew. Uh, Go ahead. I think the question you asked is a big problem because it is so general. We can't address it in any reasonable way here. Is crime up or down as compared to when? <laughs> a couple of years ago, probably a few things are up, a few serious things are up. But compared to the 90s, we're still a lot better than we were then. <laughs> and what okay. happened notably in the last couple of years? I'm sure some of you will remember <laughs> that there was a little social um, upheaval of sorts due to the pandemic. And yeah, that the horrible may, lockdowns. I'm with yeah, you. That may have some relation to some of these um, crimes that are up. So I really, it, it really bothers me when I hear people saying, "Well, this one thing happened, and so crime is up." Because guess what? I can po- point to this one thing that happened and tell you crime is down, and that neither of us really knows anything from just that. Um, One of the things that I think is important to keep in mind is that if we don't know what the relationship between what is going on in society is and how crime has changed, just calling for government to lock more people up or to repeal reforms that were actually important and necessary, that kind of knee-jerk reaction is a really bad idea. And just to bring this to the big picture, because I am a libertarian, I think one of the things we need to remember is that our founders really thought that the biggest um, problem was the danger of government, not the danger of our neighbors. Not that we don't have people in our communities who are dangerous, but that they're not a systematic danger the way government is. And if we decide we're going to deal with these individual crimes that take place by giving widespread powers to government, we're giving a lot of power to the most dangerous entity. And that is something that I think we'll regret in the future. So there was a 22% increase in overall major crime in New York City in 2022, as compared to 2021, though there was a decrease, a significant drop in apparently shootings and murders, but overall violent crime was up, burglary, uh, robbery, big surges. Oh, these guys got to hit the gun crime. range then. They got to hit their targets better. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem. They're not training well. See, Adam knows the issue. That's Damn. the problem. Yes. <laughs> no, I think a lot of this is also just like, I, I, I'm a big believer in like community based action, like, commu- like handle it yes. as a community. Because, like, again, I think uh, you, you said something earlier that was, uh, you said, uh, the libertarian audience might not like this, but I'm a law and order guy, Vini, right? That's what you said. But, like, we are i think this is a misconception of libertarians like especially i know me and my friends uh no we do want law but we just don't care about like non-violent crime pretty much that's where oh, that's I like see. the line you know it's like it's like yeah we don't want violent crime or theft either because again that's libertarian 101 right don't hurt people don't take their stuff so yeah we don't want that but when it comes to like well that guy was doing heroin in the park ago i don't care 
<laughs> like you shouldn't, but that's but, not. I'm not your dad. <laughs> what about the idea that, what like what Vin is saying, right? He's saying, look, yeah, you know, the guy having feces on the floor, or whatever, may not be a violent crime, and it's not a violent crime. That's true, but we don't we don't want a city with people Agreed. shitting in the in the corner, no, right? Sure. We don't yeah. we don't sure. want that in our city, even though that's not a violent crime. I yeah. think, and that... I probably you know. Go still I, goes I, to quality of life. Cool <laughs> yeah, it's still like you can still get hurt. <laughs> there we go. By inhaling be, human shit. So yes. I'd be curious to know, Vinu, how how you think that should be dealt with. I presume you don't mean by locking people up, because that seems like a bit of an overreaction. But do you have something in mind? Well, Me, you're Larry. I mean, I mean, uh, you know, if I were running for mayor, I, I would I would start with the. Uh, I would you know, keep keep keep. You know, look, I, I think you got to keep the street safe. I mean, I, I think, you know, in, in our pre, you know, before we get out when we're talking about topics, you know, we talked about bail reform, much needed, by the way, in New York, discovery reform, much needed in New York. Yes. So just let me, let me just say one quick thing about something Adam said regarding, you know, people going to jail for tax evasion and things like that, nonviolent crime. I think that's the difference between state and Fed, right? So in federal government, you're going to go to jail for a long time for nonviolent crimes, like, you know, fraud crimes. And, and they're, I think they're out of whack in terms of actual reality and potential harm. The flip side of that is in New York, you know, when you had the change in, in the bail laws, what it did was handcuff judges from tackling or putting bail on recidivists. So people that, you know, were released and I agree, um, I think certain classes of crime should not have bail. And I think you shouldn't necessarily lock up somebody who can't afford to make bail. But however, when you're out, you get arrested again, then that judge should be able to put you or set bail, at least some sort of bail and some sort of community monitoring. And that's the problem with New York. And, and it just went, you know, it's what's the expression you threw the baby out with the bathwater is what they did with the, with the bail reform. So. You want to make sure you don't keep people in jail for crimes. And, and look, you know, what's the worst, Larry? The biggest problem with prosecutors, you know, I was one, right? But the biggest problem in New York, and I've been on, you know, one of your shows, Larry, we talked about this, is the power that the prosecutor has. The, yes. And we could, we could devote entire shows. Chris and I was looking at your um, website and, and what you're advocating for i think we could have a spirited discussion about that i uh, thought we might you know? <laughs> uh, that you know that being said i think we could probably agree that prosecutors have way too much power and i think that that you know is, is a big discussion yourself so larry i'm going to leave it to you man i mean how much you want to get into this um you know you no, talked no, about I, crime I remember when i was when i was talking about it initially right when oh. when the bail reform package first came out um I was disappointed. I was happy it came out because I agree we needed it. I thought discovery change, for those of you who don't know who are, who are watching, um, how it would work, what discovery is, for those of you who don't know, it's basically when the person who's accused gets to see the evidence, right? That's basically what that is. The person who's accused gets to see the evidence. Before that, just the government keeps it. And before in New York State, and then please correct me if I'm wrong, they would hold it to almost the last minute. So they would keep, the, the, the state would keep all the evidence against you for literally months sometimes, and then give you two weeks or whatever the number is. Okay, good luck. Hopefully you can now, you know, defend yourself. How about now, two days? Much How about two days, Larry? Oh, two days. There we you know, go. A day two before you're oh, starting trial. You're picking a jury in the morning. Here's the rest of the stuff we've been holding for a few years. Okay, it just is it absolutely, so bail reform, discovery reform, two different things. You hear a lot of, people complaining about discovery reform, but that's just lazy prosecutors here in New York mm. who don't want to be fair and and give, you know, the defendants a chance. And this, by the way, is, is even worse in the federal system. The difference is in New York and the reason you have some of the high conviction rates in, in New York in the federal system is because the, the two big offices here, the Southern District of New York, the Eastern District of New York, they hold their discovery, whereas I have a case in federal court in Texas right now, San Antonio. The guy prosecutor turned over everything. Wow. And I'm like, wow, this is <laughs> this is amazing. You know, and, and they do that because they want to keep their conviction rates high. And on the federal level, Adam, unless there's a change by Congress, individual prosecuting offices are gonna keep doing this kind of stuff. And in New York State, because of the change by the legislature, 
The biggest cowardly office was the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, always hiding their stuff, whereas the other four DA's offices, even Staten Island, had some form of open, you know, file discovery system where they turned over everything, where they turned over stuff at least uh, on a rolling basis. So now the Manhattan DA's office can't hide the way it hid, and that's why they used to have higher conviction rates. Um, I think they still do, but... If you don't have the evidence, how can you defend yourself? Yeah, I don't like how you right, said you in Staten Island, but that's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not from there or anything. It's fine. <laughs> well, you're putting your hat. What was with the hat? Yeah, I'm from Staten Island. Oh, right. There we go. Yeah. I don't live. Okay. I don't live. I don't live in New York anymore. I live in Pennsylvania for the last eight years. And yeah, thank man. God. Where in Pennsylvania? Uh, Bucks County. Uh, so it's right by Philly. It's like 30 minutes right from Philly. Off of Philly. Yeah. Uh, they have a good right history of jury nullification activism. Just throwing that out there. In Bucks County. Ooh, yeah. I like that. Oh, yeah. There we that. go. You're in the right spot, Adam. You're in the right spot. That's good. So, so, so does the Southern District of New York court, which arrested someone handing out jury nullification information and lost. Is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Julian oh, like Heichlin. Well, oh, there we go. Wow, I learned something yeah. new. Wow, how long ago is that? Uh, several years, probably close to a decade. He has, probably he has on, on, on First Amendment grounds, obviously, yep. right? There, yeah. yeah, an FBI yeah. agent came out of that courthouse, unbeknownst to the uh, activist in question, and tried to get him to talk about a specific case, and apparently thought he had gotten him uh, to say enough, though he hadn't, because as with our training, most people who do that know you don't talk about a specific case in progress. That's mm. not, we, we don't tell jurors which way to vote. We just want them to know all their options. And uh, that got thrown out before it even went to trial. But uh, very nice. Yeah. Look at that. Very nice. Yeah. I yeah. wish New York is terrible when it comes to jury nullification. Mm-hmm. It's just it's terrible. It, it's it's. It, I think most jurors believe there's no such thing. I think. Yeah. Most I mean, maybe that. maybe Kristen, you can you can tell me. I don't know. I know it's specifically not allowed in New York State. It's certainly it not allowed in the Philly. It absolutely not allowed. is allowed in all of those places. The government just doesn't want people to know that they can't be punished for engaging in it. Um, sure, lawyers sure, 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 sure. Lawyers sure, aren't sure. allowed to talk about it. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, the no, judge but there is allowed to lie about it. To well, the there's an instruction, though. The judge is given instruction yes. both in state and federal court that says, and, and well, Absolutely. even before you get to the jury instruction, in juries during the jury selection uh, process, you know, which we say voir dire in New York, but in the South, and my cousin video here, voir dire, you know, uh, or maybe that's how they say it in, in Bucks County, I bet. They might call it voir dire. Uh, you know? You just got disrespected there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, instead of instead of voir dire, you know, Italian trash. So that's what we do say. So (laughs) during the preliminary jury instructions, the judges instruct the juries that if anybody has a personal feeling, it cannot be fair and impartial. Step out. You're not. You don't have to be part of this. So there are people, and and I always find this humorous. There are people who will say things, and you're like, you're lying. You don't really believe what you're saying, right? They got to get out of jury duty. And I'm just like, man, just if, if we had more intelligent people who aren't so beholden to the government wanting to do jury duty, then we'd have a much fairer system. But unfortunately, the kind of people you want often, they always, as a, as a, as a lawyer, you say, okay, who's left, right? The people who aren't smart enough to get out of jury duty, right? And that's, that's, that's what we're... I have a whole TED talk on that, literally. Yeah, I'd I'd love love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. And unfortunately, you know, I get asked this question. People are like, hey, dude, um, how do I get out of jury duty? I'm like, don't get out of jury duty, man. Do your duty. Oh, you know, I think more people would be. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I was like, burn it all down. That's it. I think more people would be interested in it if they didn't think that if they weren't being tokenized by the system so much by things Mm. like they're being told they basically are there to judge the facts and not the law, which isn't true. They're being threatened uh, if if they uh, don't if they have a, a hung jury and report that to the judge, they will be given instructions called the Allen charge, typically that will Dealt essentially them threaten times. and bully them into someone changing their mind. Uh, I've had yep. people who thought if they didn't change their vote, they would never be able to go home. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> 
you stick to stand stand with your gut. But uh, they were like, well, I didn't think I would ever be allowed to leave if we couldn't agree. I have a quiz on my website. That is a thing most people get wrong. Like 40% of people think that you have to either come back guilty or not guilty or you're there forever. Wow. Which, there we go. They, they, the Alex uh, Murda judge started jury deliberations after 5 p.m. After Sometimes this long, long, they will long and trial. Not give them their meal. They'll be yeah, like, it's, it's, you, it's, you that was insane. Nine. Maybe we can get this done and send you home. And it's like, Ooh, is this like a CIA black site for jury selection? Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's exactly so, what so, yeah. they put a black I'm, bag I'm, over your head. Cr like Kristen, I'm sorry. Waterboarding, just a little waterboarding, okay. and then we'll get through this day. <laughs> I, when you say that jurors are allowed to, mm -hmm. to do this, what do you mean? Because I mean a that little they bit... cannot be punished <laughs> if they decide to engage in it. Uh, if you make clear, that's during, fair. Yeah. yeah. If you make clear during deliberations that you're going to engage in jury nullification and one of your fellow jurors squeals, you can be removed from the jury, but that's you correct. can't be punished for it. That's it's correct. perfectly legal. Sure, but you're going to get kicked off that jury. Yeah, unless you keep your mouth shut, and I have training for that. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there the, we go. The, the but jurors are instructed you must follow the uh the mm -hmm. law yes you don't i'm they're the judge of the law of, you're the judge of the facts yeah they're instructed a lot of false things there are i think at least two circuits okay so i i want to i want to I wanna stop you there when you say instructed by a lot of false things uh -oh, why get, is get, that get false yeah no no, 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 no. I, i'm just because so, i'm learning well, something the new. example i was going to give is much clearer um, and that is that there, I think there are at least two circuits where judges have told jurors explicitly that there is no such thing as jury nullification. And that has been used as grounds for appeal. And the appeals court say, specifically said, those things that were said were not true, but it's harmless error. So we're not gonna give the defendant any, any sort of relief. That's my favorite dis despicable concept in the law, harmless error. Yes, I, I he agree broke with you the law. I, I, <laughs> I could not agree ourselves. with you more on that. I'm 100% with <laughs> yeah. you on that, on harmless error. Yeah. So, sorry, my, my, my sensor light went off. I got a wave. Oh, that's okay. You good. know? <laughs> oh, good. So, look, let me, do, let me do a little bit of admin while we're here. Guys, if you're watching this show and you like it, do me a favor. Hit that like button right now. That's how we get past those algorithms. So, if you're watching it, please do that. If you are watching this on Twitter right now, retweet this show. There's interesting, fun stuff happening right now. Please retweet it. If you want to support the show, you can. You can either super chat me if you want to, Larry Sharp, YouTube super chat, or you can support my sponsor. And my sponsor, you can go to theadvocates.org. They have a police accountability survey. Take the police accountability survey. It is free. Take it and share it. If you share it, they are happy, and I am happy supporting my sponsors, and it costs you nothing. So please head over to the advocates. Take one of their surveys. So just take the world's smallest political quiz. Either one doesn't matter, but do me one more solid favor. There are three people here who are giving you and me their time. Support them and follow them, either with the description that I gave on YouTube and or Facebook, or just follow them on Twitter. You can follow Adam at Adam Nutter. And if you're listening to this in the podcast, N-U-T-T-E-R. Yes. Also, yeah, yeah. I got Why back. are you laughing at his name, Kirsten? I'm, not, I'm <laughs> laughing at this. So, I'm like, I can never look cool doing that. I'm so, Adam, uh, my my admin wanted me to ask you, is that your real name? Yes. Why the fuck would I make this a stage name? It's the, <laughs> you get ridiculed publicly forever? Yes. It's crazy. Why would you make that name? <laughs> no. It's because you're a comedian, right? No. It's a great name. It's a legendary no, I <laughs> I, You're not a comedian? It's my, no, I am that, but it's a shitty name to be for a comic. It's uh, <laughs> no, it's English. I'm a very Italian, but it's the English name stuck in the lineage. So, there it is. There we go. <laughs> no, there okay, is. there we go. And follow uh, our uh, favorite attorney here. Please do that if you could at Vargas. The only attorney here. Right? So, so, see, yes, I'm but dumb. still our favorite. <laughs> yes. So yes, uh, uh, and also please follow uh, Kirsten if you would. Um, at FIJA National, which stands for? Fully Informed Jury Association, a name that was made up pre-Twitter. So there we, we go. Had to, I we like had to that. do Very something good. to fit it in one tweet. <laughs> so let me go to the other part, Adam. You used to be a cop. Unfortunately. Do cops, <laughs> do, do cops care either way how this works? What I hear, and this is what I hear, I hear that cops are leaving left and right in New York City 
Cops are leaving all over the place, but bailing on New York City. And what I hear is they're mad mostly. Again, this is only what I hear, so I could be totally wrong. If you know something, please tell me. What I hear is they're mostly upset because they feel like they, they have no impact anymore. They feel like that doesn't matter what they do. So they're packing up and they're going to Florida and getting jobs there or retiring early. Do you have any insight? I mean, truthfully, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, you, you know this about me for all the new people listening. I never, I hated that job the whole time, hated it. I mm -hmm. never identified as a cop. So mm -hmm. once I left, that died to me in my life. I was like, that's dead to me. I'll never go back. So like, <laughs> I only still talk to like two people, like honestly, mm -hmm. from that time. And they're both out and they both hated oh, it as much as I did. They, they have more time on than I did. They, they were in the academy during 9-11, which sucks, <laughs> which Ouch. sucks for them. But, um, yeah, so, like, I just – I – out. So, But, like, even when I was on, though, a lot of guys still hated it, and they were like, mm. this sucks. Also, like, New York City is – I bet you're different than the cops where I am now. In Bucks County, where there's 20 of them. Like, it's just different. It's like a right. different <laughs> world, right? So, like, I went from the – the biggest police department in the world, not even the country, the yep. world. The NYPD is the biggest in the world. So like, I went yep. from that to like now I live in a place with like my, like my wife's cousins, one of the cops. <laughs> like, you know <laughs> right. like, like it's, it's like it's like that's what we're talking about. So I think the worlds are very different uh, for sure. Uh, I, I don't think I think also like and this is always with the NYPD. They don't care about their employees. Right. So like. There's always there's always a morale problem in that department right. with like leadership in the city and it's and, and it's a whole nightmare. It's a whole no one be a cop. It's a nightmare. It's dumb. Don't do that job. It's stupid. <laughs> Don't be a cop. There so dumb. It's so you're dumb. not helping, <laughs> Adam. You're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> so jurors or cops, which is it dumber to do? Both. Oh, I like that. Oh, cop for sure. <laughs> I actually. Oh, you got I, let, me, let me clarify. <laughs> so there's no misconception. You probably don't uh, get shot as a juror. So yeah, I, I didn't. I did not. Uh, that was the. That's the expression. What I yes. mentioned that those left of the jury were the ones not smart enough. they were not who weren't smart enough to get off. That being said, I, I look for smart jurors, and I wish more yes. people yeah, no, would, would want to do it. But, Adam, where, where were you a cop, and for how long? Staten Island, baby. Staten Island? <laughs> uh, 122 Precinct. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I hated it. I hated it. Everybody knows that. <laughs> it's, uh, no, so I, I, lived, I lived and worked in Staten Island, which was the only benefit. It was 10 minutes from where I, uh, like 15 minutes from where I lived, which is sweet. My job. Mm. Uh, so that was cool. Mm. But, like, my precinct, like the 122, for everybody to know that, it was very mixed. It was mainly white. It was like a white mainly contingency of people. So like I didn't really, I never really had to deal with like a race thing. I just had to deal with like a class problem because you know people know Staten Island. Like we had a uh, Toad Hill in my precinct, and Toad Hill is some mm, yep. of like, the richest property in like the country. Like it's like mansions up there. But then you didn't go down. Giuliani the, used to live there. I don't know. Maybe I know Stallone had a house there. Like I know there Robin go, from yep. Stern show had a house there. Like also everyone in the mafia has like a house there. That's like what it is. <laughs> so right. like. So went from like that, and in, in this my same exact precinct, it was like go down to the beach. It was like poor white dudes and heroin who were like, "Fuck you!" I'm like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> like, I'm like I get it. Like so, like we dealt with all that, but we, you know, it, it was weird. Also, though, New York City is also again very different from everywhere else. Like, I only went to grand jury one time, and I've never even went to trial ever. So like, and mm. most cops don't. I, I, the nine. Well, Staten Island is different. Staten Island is different. I mean, if you're a cop in Brooklyn, in one of the one of the precincts, that's where I was assistant DA in the early 2000s, you know, we I knew the cops that were coming in from the 7-7 precinct, which is Crown Heights, the 73rd precinct, which is Brownsville. So, like, I got, I've got relationships with these guys because they would be coming in, making arrests, and I knew who the good cops were. I knew, like, I knew who the smart cops were, I should say that. Mm. You know, the ones that could explain an arrest and, and, uh, and, and be able to get past the uh, you know, See, yeah. for, like, I, I, how it always worked is like we would just only for certain like felonies for sure, and then only like certain other misdemeanors like domestic violence stuff. You would have to like go see a lawyer in the morning and just like draw it up. They called it, and you would just be like, "Here's all the paperwork. Here's what happened." And they go, "Okay," and then you go home, and then you never hear about it again. <laughs> like that's it. And like I, I'm sure, like the only time I had to go to grand jury was because this guy 
just constantly choked his girlfriend out and then went to Rikers and like had like a no contact order with her and just kept calling and calling her and kept breaking the co- <laughs> and then I went to grand jury somehow and they're like what happened I was like I showed up and he was choking her and then he went to jail I go home <laughs> like what are we uh, why am I here <laughs> you read what I wrote <laughs> <laughs> I showed up and he was choking her okay that, thank <laughs> you what happened. <laughs> got it so, like, got so, it me, go. yeah, I guess that maybe that was different I don't know but like yeah I never had to do that. <laughs> you didn't have the volume you guys didn't have the volume so I want to bring up what you brought up though Adam you talked about class right I've been on a jury twice and in both cases one was criminal and one was civil and in, and and in both cases I remember the class division being crystal clear in my eyes it wasn't based upon race believe it or not I mean it yeah, was based agreed. upon class and that's what it was the, the the trial I was on was a murder trial and everyone who was middle class and above was like he did it and you know it wasn't even we were it wasn't even to the trial yet it was basically just like well we, he did it and everybody who was uh lower than middle class was like maybe he's been through a lot let's see they the, the people who had been through it or probably had people who've been through it were much more open and of course you're not supposed to liberate we deliberated the entire time i mean we completely talked about the, the whole time we talked about it um we blatantly did not do what they told us to do we talked about the whole time um but but still, we, you could see the people who were of, of higher social status, I would say, believed the system, believed the cops. And this guy got convicted with eyewitnesses who you would not trust if they told you where the McDonald's was. And, and, no, um, and um, no, murder, no murder weapon. Kirsten, did you hear that? Larry voted guilty. I did Larry, not, I did how did you do <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I remember it. even like even like in the police, like local, like when the arrest happened, or like local, when you hear, like hear over here something in the lawyer's office, like if someone who had money got arrested compared to somebody who didn't have money get arrested, like how they even got talked about it was like by like drastically different, like yes. wildly different. Like you could just tell, and like and again, the level of crimes could be also violent, drastically different. Where the rich guy could have done something way worse, but they're like, well, you know, it's his first offense. I'm like, what's the other guy's first offense too? Why why is he going? To jail in Rikers, and this guy just gets to fucking go home. It's like it doesn't matter. You know who really gets away with everything? Pretty right. chicks. I've seen pretty chicks get arrested, yes. and guys are like, "You want to just here's my gun? Just hold my gun. Walk around. Do whatever you want here." <laughs> they don't give a shit. They get to do whatever they want. <laughs> so that's the issue. Be a pretty chick before you do a crime. Okay, got yeah. it. That's that's that's, that's one. The rules. And okay. then be have money. If you have pretty chick with money, you can run the city. You can just do whatever you want. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't matter. So that goes to a point, though. Is the system racist is the system classist is it both or neither right i mean we hear all the time racism racism is it really racist or is it just classist or is it neither or is it or is it the, the cops are racist or the or the the judges are racist or is it just a system i think it's again kind of a non-specific question i think certainly it's clear that some things in the system are racist and classist um, I, for instance when I think about the stop and frisk data from New York mm. City, it's yeah. I, I don't know if someone doesn't think that reflects racism. I don't know that all they of think mine were white people. What? Yeah. <laughs> 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 like when disproportionately more black people are getting stopped and frisked, even though disproportionately more white people were actually found with the contraband being frisked for. I'm like. And then, and then uh, I can't remember that the mayor at the time came out and was like, "Yes, we should do that more." I was like, "Wait, what?" That was Bloomberg. <laughs> that that yeah. was literally was under my era of working yeah. there. That's why I said that as a joke. I mean, actually, it's true because yeah. I worked in a white precinct, though. That's the only yeah. reason why. But they made you do it, and it's yeah. fucked up. I talk about yeah. it all the time. Yeah. I I still feel like shit. Like yeah. I was young, and I didn't. Like, whatever, it's not an excuse, but like. Yeah. Still, I was. It's just like that thing of like, hey, that guy looks like your sergeant would be like, that guy looks suspicious, and you're like, ah, he's just walking. And he's like, well, you know, let's go talk to him. And you're like, oh, we're here because you can't say no because it's like a lawful order. It's like that whole thing. You're 22 and you're like, I guess this is okay to do. And your sergeant tells you to do it. You, right. I, I was Why Marine. would you I get lie it. to me? Sergeant tells you to do it. You do it. Adam, Adam, I just want to say that all of us on our little liberty path came from somewhere. And it's not really a big concern for me where specifically people have been so much as what direction they're going. So 
Make it so oh, I like that. Give yourself a little. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't want to give Kirsten, myself the out. I appreciate that. it, but I don't want to give myself the out. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, for, Kristen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brush back in you a little bit sure. on this, and and I think when when you talk about it, I, I can tell you my views on this have changed as I've gotten older. So not in the way you're gonna like, and so I. Oh yeah, when we're gonna pile I, on you then. So yeah, you can pile on me. <laughs> I and, and by the way, I have no apologist for the district attorney or the NYPD or any law enforcement. Larry knows that I go to war with these entities. But I, I will say that when I was let me, let me get, hold on one second, man. I want to give I want to give you guys you don't understand how he fights. He has literally said for a judge, you want to put me in jail? Do it. That is literally what he has done. He That's will a movie fight shit, judges. Bro. <laughs> yes, he is hardcore. Vin is hardcore. He will fight judges. He will fight prosecutors. He does not care. He is hardcore. So yeah, I wouldn't be sure. Let me say that because I know you won't. But that's that's. I, I just I just told a judge that if you don't stop playing games, I'm going to report you to the judicial screening committee, and I'm going to make sure that the next time you're up for reappointment in the mayor's committee, they're aware of the bullshit you're doing right now. Yep. I got my adjournment when she was trying to be uh, play games with me on on this case. Uh, which actually is a case that libertarians would eat up. It's about a guy who was, who was making ghost guns in his home, a law-abiding citizen, and they executed a search warrant. And this is a U.S. Supreme Court case, bound case. But anyway, let's get back to stop and frisk. We can uh, talk about that. So my view at the time, being a prosecutor, uh, and I'm trying to remember when Bloomberg took over was it 2004 it was, i think it was 2002, the, oh, 2002. Two, two, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Oh, so nine, whenever that was there towards four, but i think I, I left the da's office in 06 and i remember when it became controversial controversial and all this stuff and at the time i used to think to myself well if you are trying to do community policing it's going to be very hard to do community policing which is getting the trust of your community to to basically report the bad guys and build that kind of relationship you know walking the beat um that you know to to build these kind of things and get people to cooperate with you fast forward a dozen or so years and the raids and, and the amount of shootings particularly in these bad areas right these these lower income call it what you want black areas inner city whatever you want to call it um I've spoken to a number of people who've said they need to bring stop and frisk black back. Black people who are telling me, telling me bring stop and frisk yeah. back. So the <laughs> the idea of it, it, the idea of it. Well, actually, one judge in the Southern District of New York said it was unconstitutional. That then the administration changed. Remember, so that j decision by Judge Shearer Simlin has no what they call precedential effect because it's a district court judge. It didn't ever got to an appellate court because when de Blasio came in, he withdrew the suit. So, you know, they didn't fight it. So, uh, you know, at that point, they didn't take it up on appeal. But the point is that the reason, and, and I've heard a number of black people in the city say, you got to bring this back because people know, the bad characters know, we're not talking about contraband. That's not the purpose of this. It's to stop guns. Right, so they knew that they went out. They went out, and and well, no, those cases were DP'd. You know, on those things where there was a stop and frisk, if there's no probable cause to look for contraband, those cases were declined to prosecute. So there are tons of dismissals. So, but what I'm saying is that people knew, don't go out with the guns because you're going to get stopped and frisked. So there were less guns on the streets, you know, with this thing. And I've heard this said by a number of people. Uh, particularly people so, who live so in these you're, neighborhoods. So you're saying that, you're, if I get what you're levels. saying, <laughs> you're saying that it that you're okay with it because it, it works. That's what you're saying. You're saying it's effective and it works. I'm saying to the extent that in areas when you speak about disproportionate numbers of, of people, you, well, you're, you are targeting high crime areas. You're not, you know, prior to de Blasio coming to office, Wall Street was not a high crime area. FIDI was not a high crime area. But thanks to de Blasio, it is now, right? So I wasn't getting stopped and frisked, you know, but I knew the people in Crown Heights and Brownsville and East New York. You know, I'm speaking for the Brooklyn precincts that, you know, I used to be, you know, used to cover as a prosecutor. We're getting stopped and frisked and guns were recovered. Now, it may have been a very low amount of guns, 
But that's missing the point that people knew they were going to get stopped and frisked and they were leaving guns at home I, and not I, taking it out okay. and far less shootings. All right, I think so that's... Go ahead. I just, as someone who actually did this, <laughs> this, <laughs> okay. this is... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me wrap this all up for, I think, both of you. And I don't think either you're going to like what I'm going to have to say. But it's kind of... You're both also going to like what I have to say. So, Vin, you're right. It does... Of course it works. Of course that's going to work. Of course a bunch of uniformed police officers rolling out of vans Flooding or playing close, or playing close, no, or, or playing close, but flooding right. a neighborhood, just essentially jumping people, being like, "Run your pockets!" <laughs> yeah, you're gonna find guns, of course, and you're of course they're gonna be illegal. I'm not saying, of course, but if it doesn't work, you no, know it also work if they all just walk through the, a neighborhood and just shot everybody, and you'll stop murderers. <laughs> it's like that also works, <laughs> but it's like my point is you're violating rights in the way. Because here's the thing, dude. Even though, yeah, there's definitely pieces of shit out there who deserve to get. St- I get it, because again lived it <laughs> but at the same token that's not like like again some lieutenant would be like no we're gonna do today we're gonna stand in front of some door and no matter who walks through you're gonna stop them ask them where they live demand their id no matter who so now you're being like sorry 70 year old lady but can i see your id even though you clearly live here because this guy in a white shirt told me to even because he's not a human being i'm sorry now i have to do this to you so, so that's well that takes the randomness out of it Right. So so then that's like the <laughs> checkpoint. Right. Everybody going through getting stopped. And that that actually reduces the argument. Look, yeah, I'm not I saying know, argument, I'm not arguing for the constitutional. I agree with you on that, by the way. I agree with you on that. But the argument, if your sergeant told you to stop everyone going through the door, then that takes out the random stop. Right, that takes problem. out the target. No, it, it totally but, does, but, but it, it goes into now. You just again, okay. Here's, here's how I always turn. And that's what being constitutional, as, right? right? If you have, if you're checking everybody, yes, that's true. Then that's he's, constitutional. He's, he's no, absolutely no, he's, not. No, hold on, hold on. Right? 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 I, you know, I might know a little bit about this. Guys, guys, wait. Let Adam finish. Adam, go ahead. He's technically right because. Yeah, it's fucked up. Like we don't think it should be, but he's right in the sense of even for checkpoints, which should be illegal, how they are legal is you go, well, make it random, stop any. You have to be like every other car or every blue car. You not random, you, the opposite of random. Right. right? You, you have, have to, you have a yeah, pattern. You have to get every third it. car or every car. Yes, you have to make it random. So he is right again. It's fucked up, and I'm not saying that it should be, but he's right. That is technically legal and okay to do it, no i have to say <laughs> I, i'm gonna Kirsten, just go chime in here for liberty because please, i think please that, go ahead i agree I with you <laughs> we, we take too much um we, we see too much ground when we say just because the government has defined us down to this narrow set of protections that that is actually what defines what's legal and what's not i am still fighting for for full fourth amendment rights and anyone who reads the fourth amendment anyone who knows the history of our country and what the founders were trying to do should be fighting hard against that i understand it's scary when people are uh, hiding guns and may have an ill intent to use them but i think we have a great example in the last couple of years of what's even scarier and that is look to hong kong they, in the space of like two years, have gone from one of the most free societies in the world to Communist Party dominated China rule there. And it if we are going to, yeah. if we're going to, yeah, it, <laughs> I, I won't get into the, the the argument there. But if you look basically back two years, and a shout out to my little, girlfriend who's from Hong Kong. So, <laughs> but if you look back, it's clearly very different. Do we agree right. on that? That's yes. True. I mean, Absolutely. it's dramatically different. They lost a huge amount. They lost the right to trial by jury. It is. It went from being not quite as robust as other common law jury systems were, but still pretty robust, to being at the government's whim. The government can now say, mm. we don't want you to have a trial by jury, and they can make up any token excuse, and you don't get one. They've lost that. And there's a reason they've been having protests to try and preserve these rights, and that's because they understand that the government is much more dangerous than their neighbors. And if and one thing that really bothers me about the stop and frisk is what happened to libertarians understanding that carrying a gun is a victimless offense? That yes, some people who carry a gun may have an intent to do ill, but that doesn't mean that we should pull everyone into the legal system just because they had one on their person. That is something that should be covered by the Second Amendment again I mean, I'm sure the government will say that's not legal, but 
Yeah, they we definitely do. But I, I agree. No, I agree with yeah. you a hundred percent. And my comparison to the to like like we were talking about the random stop and frisk at the door entry thing. I always say this. I go, yeah, cool, dude. But like, imagine every time you walked into your home, so it's like, hey, man, let me see your ID before you enter your home. You're like, fuck you. Like, you, how many times until you're like, I want to fight this guy? <laughs> like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it's like that's the shit where like you feel like a piece of shit doing that to people. Like who just like again, some guy's coming home from work. He's in his construction shit. He fucking has a family, and you're like, I know you're not here to shoot up the whole building, but. Again, white shirt told me, uh, give me your ID, dude. And he's like, fuck you. I'm like, fair. Yeah, totally. I get that. <laughs> like, I get that, too. Because no one, when I go to my house, no one stops me to go into my door. So that's all I'm saying. It's and, just, yeah. And, so, and on the topic of like most of these were do not prosecutes, how many resources were expended on that? How many people's lives were disrupted? How many people were publicly humiliated by that? How many people because of that have now a lot less trust in their government. I mean, there are a lot of effects of that, even if they didn't get prosecuted. The criminal legal system punishes people far a lot, far before they even get, get convicted. And that's one of the ways they do it is by dragging them through all of that. So I don't think me, we should um, just write that off. Let me grab a couple of comments and some people commenting. Karen says, I read my area's police blotter today, which is horrible because these people have not been convicted and 90% of the arrests are for drug possession. It's terrible. Wow, that's not supposed to be happening anymore. Aren't we like legalizing cannabis and trying to make things better and stuff? Sure I, I... are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kirsten, Kirsten, let me, let me, let me, I agree with most of what you're saying. So let me, let me, let me clear that. I'm expressing to you the arguments that have been put forth by a number of blacks who've lived in the inner city that have spoken to me saying they want stop and frisk back because they want their streets safer right now the counter to that argument can be what you're talking about which is arm everyone right and you know i had a i had a um roommate right out of college who's from texas and he said vin the armed society is a polite society and there's no road rage incidents in texas is my understanding <laughs> right because everybody's packing so if you know everyone's packing, well, then maybe there's going to be far less harm. So I am actually, I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe there's a constitutional right. And I defend clients who are charged with gun possession. Right. I mean, my, the flip side, of it, though, is there is some balancing of this and no constitutional right is absolute. And I agree with you on the Fourth Amendment. Um, I mean, Larry and I have you know, uh, spoken and, and he's seen my views, particularly during what's scary. Forget Hong Kong. How about New York City during the during lockdowns, right? Yep. I mean, I mean that it, to me, the fact that I could even have these conversations about people that at the beginning of lockdowns, Governor Cuomo designated what was essential and what wasn't, right? And he said cops and prosecutors and liquor stores. I'm all for liquor stores were essential, right? <laughs> but not criminal defense attorneys. Yes. So I wrote I wrote yes. a piece. Yeah. I wrote a piece that that night he listed. I got angry. So I just went out and started thinking and, and I sent it out. And, and the Daily News published it the next morning. And by Sunday, criminal defense attorneys were essential. Now, but put that in a bigger context. New York and Michigan, with, I don't know Michigan, well, Governor Whitner, she's a wacko, but um, were the only two states in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the country that didn't designate all lawyers as essential. So one of the things that I wrote about was that the New York State Bar Association, which didn't fight for lawyers as a legal profession, I fought for criminal defense attorneys, and I, I posted the thing. I got published, and so we got declared. I mean, that caused a little stir, and we got declared. Clearly, Cuomo hurt me. But the, but the flip side is, why weren't all lawyers, you know, essential? And then, you know, you're in a society where the Bar Association was talking about forced vaccinations and, and, and put this out. And I said, mm -hmm. what is wrong with these people? You know, and, and, and I, 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 I believe, and I'm just like, you know, I, I, I agree with you. There's, there is nothing more dangerous than our government got unchecked, particularly in New York City. Hat. 
tinfoil hat Adam checking in. Go ahead, Adam. Uh, do yeah, it. they did that because they're trying to fucking control everything and shut down the narrative. What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? There's all this was no, last course. three years. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I think For a lot of people. The flu? Don't... Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> What I think a lot of people don't realize is how similar New York and Hong Kong were in terms of jury trials. There was a nine month period in uh, the first year of the pandemic, but from the start of the pandemic to the end of that first year, um, it looks like there were nine total jury trials in all of New right, York City. Right, right. Nine, <laughs> a single digit number. And admittedly, jury trials are um, the vast, a tiny minority of all um, criminal pro prosecutions being adjudicated. Mm. Uh, most of them are settled through plea bargains. Less than 5%. Yeah, yeah but Pretty still much nationwide. one per month. That's nuts. And again, right. we have a Sixth Amendment right to a speedy trial. <laughs> so not according to the governors. <laughs> exactly. Not according yes. to the federal government who yep. just wiped all that away for two years. Yeah, and nationwide yep. in various courts, you are looking at over a two year period, 14 to 16 months of that, no jury trials were operating. When jury trials were operating, they were at a very diminished capacity mm -hmm. because they were trying to set up courtrooms for social distancing and they were trying mm -hmm. to do different things for um, juror selection and whatnot. So we basically have a massive backlog of jury trials now. And, and it, yes. I understand your point that um, no right is absolute, but when it comes to the Sixth Amendment and the Fourth Amendment particularly, I'm like, there's hardly any of those rights left. So <laughs> I'm kind of not super sympathetic to that. Well, it can't be absolute. I mean, it's like well, nowhere near absolute. I, I, I think like what, not even close to it. I, I think what you <laughs> saw was the governments and, and particularly, uh, you know, the left uh, governors and mayors basically shut down all civil liberties and yeah and dissent yeah, and up. and you saw that and it, 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 they want to see how far they could push yeah, yeah. how long see how adam's long right it's a big conspiracy no, right it, the whole time it's not how, a conspiracy how, true everything i said three yeah, years ago is just true now every single thing i've said for three years is just true and i'm so sick of being called a conspiracy theorist. It's like, at what point was I the conspiracy theorist of all the true things I've said just early because I'm not dumb? Like, it's obvious. <laughs> you know, if we look at the, the amendments, though, I look at the First Amendment and how long were newspapers shut down by the government? Not really at all. Churches? It, yeah, yeah, well, newspapers, well I mean, newspapers I mean, the left wing true. media and the left we, and the whole, the whole, right. whole, the whole th thing is this is coming Weeks from the left. Weeks to months for churches. <laughs> but jury trials? Let's look at that and let's break it down. If you were getting indicted, no problem. We kept those grand juries going. Mm. We put them on video if we needed to. We could do them in person. We had all kinds of ways to keep grand juries going during the pandemic. But the kind of jury where you could actually establish that you're not, not in trouble, those got shut down. Right, but not just, let me, let me tell you, actually it was worse than, than what you're saying. Because grand jurors, they, the, Cuomo suspended in New York what's called 18080, which is the right to be in front of a grand jury within six days. He suspended that for months on end. Wow. And then, so people got arrested, and if you couldn't make bail, you were stuck, right? Yeah. And so it was absolute insanity. Yeah. And, that's terrible. And that's one of those things that drives me nuts when, when people are all jumping on. Sorry, let's, my sensor light. <laughs> let's yeah, repeal right. bail reform. Well, okay, let's look at that. You know what? If you talk to me about getting rid of bail reform when you can give everyone a trial by jury within 60 days. Otherwise, I, I feel like we shouldn't be talking about keeping people in prison for months and months and even some cases years beyond a fairly reasonable speedy trial deadline, although it's certainly not what the founders would have thought. <laughs> But so let me let me do a little bit more admin if I during, could. During Hold an on. outbreak. Hold on. Curious, right, are you serious that I can have sushi while we talk? <laughs> eat, have your sushi. Eat, brother. Eat. Have some food. Have your, I'm doing some admin. Go ahead and have your food. Absolutely. Guys, if you like what you're hearing, please click that like button. It does matter. <clears throat> the more you click the like button, the more I get past those algorithms. Because Adam is correct. There's a conspiracy against me to keep me off and to not so I don't grow. <laughs> so please yeah, me click too. that like button. There we go. See, Adam, too. Click the Adam got thrown off Twitter. Luckily, he got back. brought back. 
That's right, you got brought back. So good, absolutely. You want to so hear how I got brought back? Did I ever tell you how I got brought back? Did I tell you what I said? You did not. No. I, I, I appealed like seven. So I, I, got, I, I, was, I got banned August of last year, right? I got unbanned like two months ago or whatever. And how yeah. I, I, I appealed like six, seven times between those six months. The one that got me back, I swear to God, I said, your new boss said we're bringing comedy back to this website. And I was making jokes. So let me back on. I swear to God, that got me back. I swear to God, that got me back. There we go. I love <laughs> it. Go, Elon. There we go. I love it. So, guys, you can also follow him. You can follow Adam on his original one now, at yeah. Adam Nutter. Yes, absolutely. You can also uh, follow our amazing lawyer, if you want to, at Varghese, a social PC. If you are listening to this on the podcast, that's V-A-R-G-H-E-S-E-A-S-S-O-C-P-C. Or also, you can follow uh, Kirsten at Fija National. That's F-I-J-A National. Check her out there on Twitter. And, of course, you can super chat me on, on YouTube if you want to or head over to, if you want to, theadvocates.org. Support my sponsors, please. There's a police account to be accountability survey. Take that survey. All the world's most political quiz, whichever one you like. Share it online so people can see it so we can have more conversations like this. Supporting my sponsor for free. That's a good thing. For free. Let me grab a couple uh, more comments if I could. Uh, some people are commenting. And of course, the Libertarian Podcast messes with you and says, is Adam on the show to represent the criminal? Tyler, so. rides, Tyler rides a bicycle, so whatever he says is irrelevant to me, okay? Tell Tyler to go ride a bike, loser. There we go. I, I'm kidding, I, I love Tyler. I, but I, he does ride a bike, I, and that's crazy. He's a grown man. He's a man with children that are teenagers. Stop riding a bicycle. Get in a car. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Teresa says, community isn't handling it. Sick of human shit and watching drug trade right in front of my business. The past three years, it has become ridiculous. I think Teresa has a valid you know, question. We have to do something, right? And look, I agree completely with the idea of discovery reform. And when I was running, I thought bail reform should have been done, kind of to, to Vin's point, more for first-time offenders than anybody else, right? First-time yes. offenders, give them a chance. But if you've been arrested three, four times in a row, you got to stay in jail, even though that sucks. And I think what you're saying- If you, you can know, get a jury is, trial in a reasonable amount of time. There should not yes. be an unlimited- you got you're just stuck in jail because we accused you of something serious i agree but i'm just being forward you know the the choice is i let someone out who has been accused three times maybe even convicted once or twice right and the stats show i'm not saying it's true but the stats show if you've been convicted two or three times you've been arrested four or five times you did the thing Right, you did it. You're guilty. You did the thing. I agree. Right? It's, I'm just yeah, statistically it's probably true. You did the thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Well, maybe <laughs> true. The point is to keep the, the government in check. They have to be. And, held as a criminal defense, defense attorney, I would say you always presume yeah. innocent, Larry. Uh, <laughs> yes, I don't know. I'm saying statistically, you did the thing. That's all. I'm, I'm not saying you did it. It's possible you didn't. But if you've been arrested and convicted a couple times, you arrested again. You probably did the thing. And Teresa's point. Now I'm gonna let you back out. You're also probably gonna do it again. You know so, how to solve it. I, I, so, well, just, let, I think we, I'm just saying that. Let am, am I wrong in, with this? Let, let businesses and, and and private individuals actually enforce property rights and legalize Agreed. drugs so that they can open up their own storefront and well, not do it in front uh, of yeah, your business. For sure, but, but, uh, but I agree. Like if, if you let people actually defend their property, yeah be it business or not because yeah. i'm sick of the notion like especially this is a very lefty notion over the riots over 2020 and stuff where they're like property isn't equal to human life it actually is because a lot of those people is that's their fucking livelihood so like stop with the bullshit where it's like people think first of all most not, i think 99 percent of insurance some crazy amount of insurances don't uh cover yeah they call they call it an act of god yes yes they yeah. don't cover so, riot insurance Right, and yeah. so the left, and you, I'd see these comments because I see people who own businesses, you know, pharmacies who had got looted. And I remember this one guy in Philadelphia put up pictures, and people were like, "Oh, his insurance will cover that." I said, "When are you going to get these payments? Right? Yeah. You got to shut down. He's got to feed his family. He's got to feed his employees and their families." I mean, I mean how much will insurance is... cost next time he has to pay it? Of course, yeah, I mean, it's going to be ridiculous. Yes. I do, I do hear people, and look, I, I get the point. Someone will say. But Larry, if someone is stealing something, right, should the should the penalty be death, right? And I get that logic. No, the penalty shouldn't be death. I agree with that. It should not be death. But if you, but if I am physically there 
and you are stealing from my store, and that's how I feed my family yep. or put my kids through school. Great. And I shoot you. You know what? I'm 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 okay with that. I am. Totally I'm agreed. Okay. The rooftop and Koreans you, are heroes, in my opinion. I'm yes. serious. Like and I'm, if you I'm, happen I'm, to I'm, get yeah. killed. That's you know. Right, you're I, making the decision as a grown think, person to break it, into someone else's property that they work for. You're not entitled to a goddamn thing in my home, anything I built my my worth on, or my stuff. And Fuck I think yourself, we should. I don't care. We <laughs> should keep in mind that if people were allowed to carry guns and not get stopped and frisked and have them stolen from them, then the calculus would change the, for for people who were committing property crimes because they would know their risk was. Sub substantially different than Way perhaps higher. most of yeah. them would be. So I might get shot in my face if I hey. break into this right. guy's car. Yeah. <laughs> so for all, for, all the for all the libertarians out there who live in New York, there's hope on the way. I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the you guys are familiar with the Bruin decision, which invalidated New York's licensing yeah. regime. Well, New York State responded and basically did the same thing, right? Yeah. So... The cases are going to make their way. And so what New York judges, New York state court judges in a, in a concerted effort, like together, these all got together, they went to judge school and they said, this is how you stop these things um, and people challenging the law on Second Amendment grounds. You say they don't have standing, right? So in order to bring a constitutional claim, you have to have under the law what's called standing. That means your rights have to be affected. And so what New York State judges are doing is saying that you have no standing because you never applied for a license and weren't rejected. And therefore, you know, you don't have standing to bring a Second Amendment argument. Nonsense. Because this case, this is going to make itself back to the Supreme Court. And New York is in for a day of reckoning. And this is what I'm going to be using to defend my client who was not out there you know, I mean, he may have been building a little arsenal, but, you know, he wasn't out there hurting anybody. He had never robbed anybody. He wasn't concealing. He was in his home building guns. So, you know, we're waiting. And, and this is reference to that judge I spoke to you about. I was trying to force me to go to trial. I said, trial? I need statistics from the NYPD about how many people actually applied because that will blow your standing argument out of the water. Because if you have no chance to get a license because they're going to reject everybody, yeah. right? Get the, I'm waiting for the numbers. I kind of know what the numbers are, but I have a FOIA request into the NYPD. I made it last fall. They tell me they'll get to me in April. Well, I said, well, listen, well, I need to adjourn past April because I need to file my motion. Judge says, no, you got to go to trial. I said, judge. You're not a lifetime appointment. I will, you know, tell the mayor's ticket for me, and all of a sudden I get my adjournment. You know, yes. I mean, it's it's. That, that, I, that gun I, thing I is that. true. From again, personal. So back when I was still uh, uh, working for the NYPD, and my my parents were still living in New York at the time, also in Staten Island. My my dad was uh, he had a gun. He applied for a gun license because uh, he was working like security part time, like as a side gig, and. Uh, he, when he applied, they asked you, like, any members of law enforcement. He's like, yeah, my son works for you guys. And they went, <laughs> don't give a shit. And, like, like these, like these, they, like, rejected him the first time. He had, had applied two or three times. And, again, he's at the time, he's, like, you know, a guy in his 50s at the time, you know, never arrested ever for anything. Oh, we never have a, even, like, a fucking ticket. And they're like, nope. Why? He wants yeah. to work security. Who gives a shit? It's like, it's so, they, right. yeah, they just do not give him out. <laughs> yes. It's, it's embarrassing and bad how that works. 100%. 100%. <laughs> So Ray says, I want jury duty just for a chance to use nullification on a wider scale. <laughs> well, you better so, keep your mouth shut, Ray. You know, and not, right, not right. mention the word go jury to, nullification. <laughs> Don't say go anything. To my, go to my website, fija.org slash jury duty. I've got training to help you get on the jury by being truthful but neutral in your there answers. Go. Roger says something that's really interesting. Right? Roger says, want people to try to get a, uh, want people to not try to get a jury duty? pay them a real income to serve. I think that's a valid point, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if, I mean, if you, if you, if people actually got paid mm -hmm. to be on juries, yep. they'd be more open to being on juries. If There's a reason better. they don't get paid. And uh, it, it's interesting because who has a lobby? Prosecutors have a lobby. Criminal defense attorneys, to some extent, can lobby because it's not as much, not as, not as much. As yeah, I want to be clear on that, uh, but to some extent. But that's because it's a job for a while for them. Yeah. But jurors yes. 
you're one and done, maybe twice and done. I don't think I've ever heard of anyone who had jury duty three times in their life. There may be a few. I, I see it. You but see you're never going to yes, lobby I will, for a I will be that person next year. That will be me next year, yes. I'll be on the jury <laughs> third time next year. Well, that would be well, well, you're never getting on a jury again, man. I was like, <laughs> like, I was like, what was the last time you were on a jury? Who lobbies for juror pay because there are so few jury trials to begin with, and the jurors themselves, you're not going to lobby to get paid you know, well for a week. You know, that's right. not a thing you would engage in. Well, but in. some of these juries, but, yeah, I mean, it's two, three, three four, five better. weeks sometimes too, yeah. though. So yeah. they are... Yeah. If, if, if jury trials were just a week only and that was it, mm -hmm. you'd have more people serving. But sometimes it's three or four weeks. The one I was on was yeah. two two weeks, maybe more than that. Plus, mm -hmm. it was several days before we got selected, right? You, you got to call in the Thursday or whatever. I forgot what it was. And then several days before and you show up and do nothing for like two days. Then you finally get selected. Mm -hmm. Then you got to get interviewed. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it's a... Yeah. It, so, yeah, it's I agree. Ridiculous. I think Raj is perfectly correct. He's right. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I, I think some kind of business incentive or you know some kind of tax break or something along those lines tax and businesses are overtaxed to begin with right so like if you know i run a small firm if i were to lose my admin to a tweet i i, I wouldn't be this would yeah. would wreck me so right. one of the reasons that one of the ways to get a jury duty is extreme financial hardship and you know like who can really you know afford to the people that are wealthy and on salary or other reasons you know people who you know yeah. are, are on public and, public assistance and and enjoy the 40 bucks they get yeah. a day for and, meals and it really <laughs> yes. bothers me to think about you know how it changes the idea of a jury that represents the community when everyone who can't afford it kind of is self-selecting out yep <laughs> you know we're looking Absolutely. at there, there is a, a study I read that I thought was really interesting that had a great example to illustrate the importance of that kind of diversity on a jury. They, it basically said that people who are um, higher income, white collar workers, if they're told that someone was carrying a knife during the or when they were oh, um, yeah. apprehended for a, an alleged offense, they, the higher income people, the wealthier people tend to think, oh, they were carrying that because they meant to do someone harm or threaten someone or something like that. Low collar, blue collar, low, lower income uh, people, people with less wealth tend to think, well, maybe they're carrying it to defend themselves or maybe they use it in their job. Open so, boxes or something. Right? Yeah, exactly. So without anyone having any ill intent, you know, or any conscious intent to be unfair to someone, just selecting out people who can't afford to be on jury duty changes yep. the character of the jury and how the jury is going to interpret what it sees. So the scientific libertarian has a joke for us. He says, better a thousand innocent men are locked up than one guilty man go free <laughs> might shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. But, but speaking of that, I want to go to something that I think is, is topical. Topical on this. And that is the QAnon shaman guy, right? The guy who got four years, I think, in jail for January 6th. Yeah. And why months, I bring this right? up. Yeah. Yeah. Th yeah. Something like three. Is it 41 months? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You got, yeah, you got a bunch of time. Um, not that I think you should have shouldn't have gotten in jail. Is that it's not the question I'm saying. But the the recently Fox News showed all the tapes, the videos of the 40,000 hours of of uh, the the uh, January 6th events. His lawyer didn't get that. Is that fair or not, right? There's a part of me that says who gives it to them, but his partner goes, no, wait a minute, that guy, he got screwed. His Hi, people should have been received. Tinfoil hat Adam showing up again. Hi. Yeah, that was, a, the whole thing was a conspiracy to fuck these people over. Yeah, where have we been the last year? Yeah, 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 no, January 6th was a joke. What coup? Suck it. This is crazy. They walked him around almost hand in hand like an old woman. They're like, look. And now we're in the middle of the room. Take your pictures. Okay, come on, guys. Now we're going to go in here. Ooh, now take your pictures well, here. But my Ooh. point to this, Adam, no. is if, if, if I'm his attorney, right, yeah, I you probably want to show that to the jury they to see if the jury is going to go. Yeah, the jury is going to go, oh, this is not as bad. That. Of course. Yeah. They, of course, they're trying to make January. Yeah. I had to hear for a year and a half or however long that was ago now that January 6th was worse than 9-11 by a psychopath from the left, okay? And then cucks on the right. So I am over this. <laughs> no, everyone there got fucked. No one should have went to jail. Not a single person. No one should have went to jail. The cop who I shot that lady in the next room went to jail. 
<laughs> I'm upset that Trump didn't pardon I, them. We forward. I, I mean, they went there whether you think they were bad or good. Good joke. They went there because they believed that Trump told them to do something. They believe that. That's for sure. Well, they they're just dumb. randomly doing stuff. <laughs> I'm not they saying they're it. dumb. They're definitely dumb. But that's they not a crime. They went there because they thought Trump told them to do it. And why didn't Trump pardon him? He's also dumb. They're, it's all, He's they're selfish all dumb. is what he is. He's looking well, out for dummies. himself. That's true. It's a bunch that's of true. dummies doing dumb shit so, by a bunch of alien pedophiles. I don't know. <laughs> like, that's, who's so then tell him? me, is this grounds really for him to get off? Or am I just, I'm just upset. I mean, is this really a thing? Is, was it unfair? Well, I'm as you were speaking, I am pulling up his docket report. It's something I pay a subscription for. Anybody, you know, you can actually go on Pacer, any citizen, get an account and pay for it to look this up. So I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh... Well, you're looking. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask Kirsten. Kirsten, do you think I'm right on this or no? Well, I was just gonna make a joke about harmless error. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's a harmless error. That's all that was. Yeah. Yes, there, I, I there is a I lot. Couldn't show everybody that. Yes. Yeah, there, there is a lot that I've heard people who are outraged about the January six defendants, like their their speedy trial rights aren't aren't being respected. This, that, and the other thing. This information is not coming out, and I'm like, different yes, ballgame. That's all true, cool. but it's that's how it's been for a long, long time. Mm. You're just noticing it now, <laughs> and. I mean, it's not funny in that in that I, I find it amusing that that's true. I, it's funny that it's like suddenly when it's when it's people you care about now, this issue is important to you. Right. No, I, I understand I that, that that's too. human nature, but yeah. Yeah. yes, you, you, that's that's probably going to be allowed by I, the courts. Is I agree. it wrong? Probably. I, I shit on the but, left a lot this podcast, but now I'm going to shit on the right for a minute. Because this is my point with like the lockdowns is a good example, and and when everyone was like, uh, "Well, the cops are arresting people for opening their business." What the hell? I'm like, oh yeah, no, they're not your friends. I don't know if you guys knew that or not, <laughs> but like they're not. Yes. And now you guys, but here's here's why they're dumb. For you, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, fuck you guys. And then as soon as soon as like something else went their way, like oh yeah, the cops are heroes again. You're like, oh, you guys are so dumb. You guys, so they're never gonna get it, and the left's never gonna get it. So we're just. We're screwed. <laughs> there you, go. you, Linda, Linda, you, you, you've made Linda angry by saying it bothers me that the U.S. is being compared to the communist-controlled Hong Kong. See, so I want to make Kirsten, clear that I don't angry. think we're as bad as that. I want to make clear that I'm making that um, comparison to say we should be vigilant here not to become that. Mm, That's my. I point. like that. I like that. And Dustin brings up abolish the Patriot Act. Agreed. 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 One hundred percent on board no no one's fighting you on that one you, you got us all yes on that one absolutely yeah what else yes. you gonna say like puppies are awesome yeah man we know <laughs> yes we got it and they are that's right sam says don't forget the empty the prison uh don't forget the empty the prison of violent offenders while they were arresting True. people for going outside for running their businesses so yes there was some of that. that for the for the new yorkers yes <laughs> i'm in montana for anyone not, not who's not familiar with me uh, but I have had a hard time finding cases of people who were actually arrested for violating lockdown orders. Is that, and it seems like if anywhere would be the epicenter of that, I assume it would be New York City. <laughs> you know what it was? I think it was people would be like, I'm not wearing masks anymore. And they couldn't arrest you for that, obviously, because that's highly illegal. So what they were doing is they were just trespassing people from businesses okay, and arresting that, them out. Yeah. You know, it's a loophole bullshit, but it's for yeah, the mask. Yeah. But they just can't say that. It's, this is always what I say to dumb lefties who are like, they didn't, the government never arrested anybody over the lockdown. I'm like, yeah, they didn't find anybody right. Because they can't, because the government can't come out and be like, if you don't wear a mask, we'll arrest you and fine you. But what they can do is say, no, we're not going to, hey, we'll never say that yeah. to you guys. But if a business lets you in their own business without a mask on, we're going to find that business and shut them down. We will do yeah. that. So it's like you are essentially doing that, but because you're threatening businesses. So they're going to enforce it to protect their ass, obviously. So it's just, and, just a workaround loophole. Yes. And, and um, I don't think any of these rose to the level of something that would be afforded a jury trial. Correct. Mm. They're all too minor. I would imagine. No, 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 just no, no, no. Closures, These, these right? were felonies. Chansley, oh, yeah. Jacob Chansley. We're talking about January. No, no, no. 6th. hold on. No, no, no. Oh, no. She was talking. She was talking. She was talking about back the, to that, uh, the lockdowns. She was no. talking lockdowns, man. So, no. Is it a little no, sidebar? Now, now let's let's go back to the, the one. Let's yeah. go back to the QAnon guy. Go ahead, Ben. Tell me. So I, I was looking up his stuff. He pleaded guilty 
and he yep. pleaded guilty to a felony count of obstruction of justice. He had been obstructing an official proceeding. Um, he, look, he, he pleaded guilty and then he, his lawyer was retained. And this is what I don't understand, why he was held uh, for so long. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to see here what his bond amount was. was. about his case, right? Uh, I, his lawyer was clearly incompetent. And the worst part is, of course he pled. They couldn't get the evidence that would show he wasn't he, he wasn't that bad. Now, well, look, again, but, but I, don't, was I didn't see all 40,000. Everything so I've seen on Twitter. <laughs> like everything we've yeah, all like seen they could for a their year. Own what are you evidence? talking about? <laughs> Just watch, Listen, it, for, I, I, watch I, it for an hour and be like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know that most defendants have that kind of resources to do that because it – it may not be as simple as watching for an hour. It may be more like watch for several hours and yeah, my for point someone, is that right. You have to pay. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hours. brush back a little bit on you guys because to Please. me, I when I saw January 6th and I saw the video coverage and I saw people storming the Capitol, I got angry. I mean, and and I I have no problem with the cop who shot that woman. Oh, you know, I, I I have, I have no problem. I thought. Everybody, the, the the issue was why wasn't the government, why didn't, in my understanding, I know people work for government, they said they knew this was going to happen, they didn't protect the Capitol and set up barricades to prevent who that from happening. Shit, though, you know, they knew that this would, what? Like, who, care? who cares? It's, it's fucking, okay, it's a I, I care. To me, that's, that's, that's a symbol of America. And you know what, like, you don't storm the Capitol. And the way they did it, now there have been certainly Tucker Carlson, you know, showing scenes from outside. Not everybody went inside. Absolutely not. But for those that did, and those that did so in a violent manner, you saw the, the videos of the, some cop being choked as he was there and others hit. Like, you know, this is, this is a problem. So for those that did that, I have a problem with. Now, the question of what he did, I mean, That's my like, issue, right? I don't know if he was one of them or not. Is well, he, he, right? he said and he like, allocated. It looks like he, he acknowledged he's one of the first riders into the building. He acknowledged using a bullhorn to rile up the mob, offering thanks and prayer while in the Senate to get rid of traitors, uh, scratching out a threatening note to Vi Vice President Mike Pence saying, it's only a matter of time, justice is coming. Um, I mean, so look, he was inside. You know, I don't know. In terms of 41 months, I think that sounds, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm not losing my, sleep my, over my it. My question isn't that. My, my question Larry, I'm not losing sleep over this guy. I don't know. I, I think there's a fundamental difference. My question is, a lot of people already took plea deals before that video came out. That is my question, right? The video wasn't released to the public until yeah. recently. That is you my question. Get, so you don't get because discovery of that, to take a plea deal. It's not, That's it, my point. Yeah. That's right. I, I kind of see where you're going. Well, that. actually, to, if, if to no, in the federal lawyer. federal case, you do. Oh. You get Rule 16 discovery, and so in that sense, a, until until a, New York, yeah, absolutely. No. Uh, in New York, when you're indicted, now the question, and I and I have to look and read this a little more carefully. I don't know if he got indicted first or he did a plea or his lawyers plea bargained out before you went to indictment and did a what's called a pre-indictment plea. I don't know that. I'm trying to figure that out from looking at the docket. So, but in, normally in federal court, you actually get more discovery until the discovery laws were put into effect than New York State discovery. And New York State was way behind, is way behind Pennsylvania because uh, I've gone pro hoc into state court in Pennsylvania, I've and and other states are way better at discovery law than than New York. That being said, in the federal government now, because of New York's changes, New York is better than the federal government in terms of discovery now. So, but you know, it, it it's a. I, I'm trying well, to figure sure out what happened here. You're not really sure whether that's a difference. I'm going to go back to the other part part though. I happen to think. I think the people to blame for nine for for, for um, January sixth, which sounds terrible, is the cops. I agree with you, Vin. That should never happened. 
The cops should have said, don't They come had in. enough they notice. I, they in. knew what I, had happened. They should have said, don't come in. They should have said, I'm opening the door and walking people they around. Opening like, the door and I I have, people uh, in. We all watched the video. This is a crazy they argument. Said no. <laughs> this is they nuts. They would literally walk in. They opened doors, let people through. This is this is insane. And people were just casually walking through fucking lines. They should have let nobody in. They knew that it could have turned into a riot. And it I did. also don't respect government or government property. In. Like it's it's a it's a building paid for by us. It's public I know, property but you as don't far want as it to turn I take into a riot, it. And they knew they could have. Right, that's my. They, they could have prevented it. it. So apparently, they did. They did I, I know they from... wanted that to happen. Obviously, conspiracy. Hi, Tim. Yeah, well, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I knew people <laughs> that live in Northern Virginia, and they were saying they knew they knew that this was a a, a basically a jumping point for people to go into D.C. and everybody knew it and did nothing about it. And I think that's the, the bigger issue. I know you're, you're bringing up a different point. You're like, who cares, right? I care. Well, I'm saying a lot. And I, I, and I think that they could have prevented that from happening. Because right. this, this is the third shit you happening. see in third world countries. And I'm yeah. like, damn, this happened in Washington, D.C. Right, if, if you're trying to complete, by the way, Trump's a dummy. I don't care about Trump. But if you're trying to completely demoralize Trump and all of his fan base, how do you do that? Oh, I don't know. Let them do this and then bring the hammer of hell down everybody who went into that fucking building, which is so clear as day. And shooting an unarmed woman who was entering a building, a public building, not someone's home, not into a bank, a public building that we fucking pay for is atrocious. That's crazy. To, that's crazy to me that you think that's OK. I, I think I don't honestly, I think they should have formed barricades and prevented anybody from getting it. Right, but they See, didn't, and they okay. walked them through. Hold on, That's I gotta be happened. clear on this. I mean, <laughs> not not guys, everywhere. What second. do you? T I mean, parts, oh, maybe guys, some parts. Guys, guys, chill for a second. I want to be clear. I don't think they should have shot Ashley Babbitt at all. I think it was a terrible idea. However, I go with you, Vin. That should have never happened. Like they should have. That should have never happened. But once they let them in, once the cops let them in. You can't go shooting people at that point. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's two different stand. arguments. As okay, we could argue they if got in. No, but she was that where she was trying to get in. They weren't letting her in. I mean, right, she was going through the window. I know they, they didn't let her in. <laughs> they did. They shot her. That's true. Yes, <laughs> they shot her in no, the fucking my, neck. My, my which was the only violent them. death that day, by the way. Just want to point that out there. Not the also cops true. being. Now the cops crying on stage. They yelled really loud at me. Fucking bitches! Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> fucking cowards! I got shot at three times, by the way. I'm, I don't give a shit. I got shot at through a door. <laughs> Shut up. Man up. You let, have a fucking let, gun. Let you have a fucking shield. Shooting, let me grab a couple of uh, comments. Um, Johannes says, fuck yeah, rooftop Koreans. Um, yeah, fuck yeah, Johannes. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of the rooftop Koreans. For those of you who don't remember, during the riots, the Koreans in their markets, they got armed, they got on top of the roof. I'm like, you come, you come mess with us, we're going to shoot you. They were like, yep. you are getting shot. If you come rob us, you're getting shot. I'm a big fan. I wish there were more rooftop Koreans. I am totally, yes, on board. By the way, if Ashley Babbitt correct. was on top of somebody, strangling them to death, yeah, shoot her in the fucking face, I guess. But that's not the case. That's why I want to make that clear. I'm not saying don't defend life. Of course, always defend life. But that's, that wasn't what was happening. And always defend private property, but that also wasn't what was happening. It was but not public. Says, but not public property. I don't give a shit about. No, I don't care about public property. Yeah, I, don't. It's, I don't. Not really. I don't. Especially no. the capital where they steal my money, and they bomb babies overseas. I don't care what happens to those people at all. And I don't care about that <laughs> building at all. And I don't know why let's, any of us do uh, anymore. Let's, any let's walk down some more comments. Come on, Adam. Let me do some comments. P Patty says minimum wage for jury duty. Um, I feel like it could be even more, but at least minimum wage, right? Yeah, I, I, mean, if, I mean, if the government won't obey its own minimum wage laws, that really tells you something. There, there is pay, jurors are paid like anywhere from fifteen dollars a day. No, 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 no. Not no, in no. New York, like, but in some states, yes. Okay, yeah, but in New York, yeah, it I mean, it's commensurate. It's like New, I think New it might even be forty. I remember years ago hearing, but I think it might be more now. Yeah. Uh, last uh, I heard, it was forty bucks a day. Last I heard. But. How much, how much of that do you pay in transportation to get there? And if you don't get called or to sit on a jury, you have to buy your lunch that day while you're sitting around waiting. Yep. It's like, yep. it could be theoretically even a new negative. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Grace agrees with, with you, by the way. She says, agreed, Trump is more selfish than dumb. She agrees with you. There we go. I like that. We are right. I agree with that. Yes. Fair. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Um, Space says, J6 proves the left is so much better at PSYOP game. 
2020 riots are so much worse, but Republicans are too feckless to protect their base. That's a great point. They literally destroyed cities, and we're not talking about any of them getting shot. Okay, public what property. city was destroyed? I think that's a little bit dramatic. Portland, Seattle. They took Those an autonomous are not destroyed. zone. They took, an, they took four blocks of Seattle and made an autonomous zone. What are you we talking about? Big Seattle is. It doesn't matter. They're taking over your but I'm telling precious you public is property, the city everybody. was not destroyed. A four block section was we affected. We watched that's buildings burn. City. My brother lives in Seattle. The city was not. Do we destroyed. all not watch buildings burn? Do we not watch CNN say mostly peaceful protests as there's giant blaze yeah. behind them uh, as buildings were on fire? That we just do we watch the different city things was like destroyed. The it means that a small city. Well, I mean, you make me choke on my sushi. <laughs> <laughs> but but millions good. of dollars you were. Know, how how if, much money? You how much money did 2020 riots? You could say there was serious damage. I would not argue with you. But the city was not destroyed. Okay, hyperbole. I'm a comedian, Chris. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> but like, but my point is, millions of dollars were. Uh, I'm assuming. I don't know the numbers in front of me, but I'm sure Good. someone in the comments could look it up. How many millions and millions of dollars those cost compared to the capital? Who gives? It's like it's not comparable. And yeah, so wait, again, hold on again. If, if you look at the size, I wonder if uh, I don't know how big the size was where people were uh, there, but. I, it sounds like it's probably not super different. I think a bunch of people having a problem with one federal building that's con is a lot different than a bunch of people across a bunch of cities across the whole country destroying private property is a bit different. Well, I I would agree with you that that I'm much more concerned about the private property than the public property, but I, I'm not I'm not. I don't think we do ourselves any favor in establishing credibility by acting like the West Coast who, who's is paying, down who, or something. Adam, who's paying to fix that public property that you don't care about? We are, because right. I'm forced at gunpoint to, or I lose my rights. That's why. So let's, I mean, what are we talking about? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> my, yeah, my, my big problem with January 6th is not about the public property. It's that I do not like people trying to install a president who wasn't elected. And that, in my opinion, is Trump. I think there's facts to back that up. If, so let me. If, let I wouldn't me even have a big problem with it if they were just like, let's let's just not have a president. I would be more or less okay with that, to be honest. Let's see how that goes for four. I, I, I got to tell you, I might have jumped on the side with the "don't have a president" thing. I'm, I'm <laughs> I mean, exactly. I might have. I might have jumped on the side with that one. I might have. I might have. But yeah. Right. But so yeah, Roger this says, idea that we should go to a place where someone can indefinitely be president because people behave badly is a bit. I like, I like this comment, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Roger says the defense lawyer saying that they should have shot Babbitt and the cops saying that's beyond the pale up is down. Uh, down Roger, is up. Roger, I'm very offended. I didn't identify as a comedian, not a cop. <laughs> identify as a comedian. Okay. <laughs> that's very good. That is, that is very good. But no, um, Grace says $2.3 million in damage to federal buildings done in Portland during the riots. Cool, I don't Wednesday. care about those either. I, yeah, I think that's just the federal buildings, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, that's, that's off of Newsweek. But let, let me go, we're talking about Trump. Let me go to Trump now. And this one, specifically for you, Vin. What does it mean? I'll put down my sushi. <laughs> that's all right. You can eat while it's fine. What, what does it mean? It's so cool. I never get to do this. Dude, I want sushi <laughs> so bad now. You've been making me want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> now we're all hungry for sushi, Vin. It's your fault. So um, what does it mean when they say they invited him to talk to a grand jury? I don't understand what that means. It sounds <laughs> like they're trying to get him to come in and say something stupid so they can get him. That's, That's how exactly right. That's exactly right. First of all, there's no such thing as an invitation to the grand jury. That is the biggest, most bogus thing that I've heard and I commented on one of the news stations last week and I was like there's no such thing as an invitation to the grand jury. You're either a witness you know you get subpoenaed um, if you're a defendant you don't have a right to testify in a grand jury if you haven't been charged but once you learn of a grand jury you can request to testify and once you file in under New York State law what's called a cross 19050 notice pursuant to the CPL section, then you you can trust. I can assure you, I'm sure Trump's lawyers never filed a cross 19050 motion because under no circumstances would they allow him to speak before the grand jury. I mean, you want to talk about, like, th that would be the, the dumbest thing, those any lawyer that allowed Trump to speak. 
and and I don't like Trump, you know, and I, I agree with you if I understood you correctly, but trying to install a president who was not elected, right? I'm 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 with you on that hundred um, percent. I think he's a criminal, but on this issue, I don't think he's a criminal. On what the Manhattan District Attorney's Office is looking at him for, I think is complete nonsense. And I don't see how they sustain these charges. And the way that I, and I've said this multiple times on different networks, I said, until I actually see the guy in handcuffs, he's Teflon Don, nothing is sticking. Mm. And I think that this pen, and I, I can't say this on, on when I'm on CBS News, but this penny ante shit, which they're looking at him for, is, mm. is garbage. And all it does, I, I was watching Bill Maher the other night, and he, he brought up a point. He goes, if they indict him, this is only going to help him. Mm. You know, it's only, gonna, it's only going to fuel more people. Like, because when you see this stuff, even the people that are in center or right of center or left of center, you have to be concerned at a certain point. You took your shots at him. You missed. You know, and, and this is, is like, come on. Yeah, no, the well, Trump, the, the, the Trump psyop, not psyop thing. I use the psyop wrong in that. Scenario. But like, the, like it's it's so like he it's done, man. Like anybody who still talks about Trump as like a thing. It's like, shut up. It's it's so irrelevant. It's it, it's like it's it's sad. It's like going to the well. It's like it's like using the same joke over and over again. It's like, but Trump. It's like okay, that was four years ago. Like what are we talking about? It's like but I gotta tell you what I, what I think. This and and I'm gonna hang out with in, with, with Adam and his and his conspiracy stuff because I think the reality right. is the Democrats don't <laughs> want, they do not want Trump to go to jail. They just want him to be wounded and hope that the middle ground people don't vote for him or right. don't show up or aren't excited. He's got about 35 percent, give or take, of the Republican base that will vote for him no matter what. No matter what, give or take in the area, no matter what he does, literally no matter what he does. But if they can get the others to not, then Democrats think they're going to win. So they want to injure him. They love Trump. Democrats love him. They can blame him for everything. My car didn't start. Mm -hmm. It was Trump. Exactly. It doesn't matter. They can blame him for everything. So I'm telling you, if Trump had a heart attack or he had like kidney failure, there'd be like six Democratic doctors down there. Marla, like, don't die. Don't die. Here, take my kidney. Don't die. They'd make sure he would not die. They want to keep him so that he can be wounded going into 2024. That's my. I, idea. I don't think they. Problem. I think that there are. So what's left now, and this is what it appears, unless something secret, you know, from the feds is coming out. I don't believe there will be any charges. You and I spoke about this, Larry, regarding the documents at Mar-a-Lago. I. I don't. If these are state prosecutors here and in Georgia looking to charge him and make a name for themselves, I don't see him like I don't see him beating Biden so I think if you're the Democrats lay off Trump you know like let him run you want him you don't want DeSantis right they do want Desa Trump. that's true Democrats they want, want Trump. Trump well then do. stop trying to put him in jail you know I mean like leave him alone like he'll just he's gonna lose to Biden but if DeSantis wins, I think that's the real thing and I and I notice and the real hardcore liberal is really scared because I so I watched John Oliver the other night on Sunday night. Did you see that episode? It was all about DeSantis, and yes. it was he spent you know usually he does some stuff. He did like thirty seconds of little of some other story, and he spent the entire show Massive. trying to know uh, on on DeSantis. And I'm like, and you know it's clear, and sometimes even here, and I think for most of us, I think we're all mostly on the same side. You know, and we might disagree about certain things, you know, shooting Babbitt, not shooting Babbitt. We might disagree <laughs> on that one, right? <laughs> and, and, and maybe I should have laughed because she's dead, right? But the, the you know, but I will say this, like, on, on this issue, like, this is, like, insanity. I mean, and, and the fact that you're spending so much time. I don't see how they get passed. I mean, this hush money election thing was made in 2016. And I argued last week that I think this is all just a big publicity stunt for the Manhattan DA to, to deflect criticism from the fact that he didn't indict Trump when he came in and he dismissed the, you know, the inflation of his real estate values. And this is say, hey, look, I'm trying to do something. If the grand jury doesn't come back and, and indict him, that's not my fault. Blame it on the grand mm. jury. Why not? Blame it on the grand jury. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Such a, I, I, I such like a great tactic. 
So well, I think that's what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, look, if he if he if he arrests Trump, I will say, listen, I was wrong, right? Mm -hmm. I was wrong. You hear somebody you finally put it in. That still doesn't mean he's got a sustainable, winnable yeah. case. Yeah. Right. 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 Let me do a little bit of admin if I could, guys. Guys, if you like this show, if you like what we're saying, or if you don't like it, I don't care. If you're watching still, please click the like button. It does matter. It is important. Please do that. If you're watching on Twitter, then please retweet this right now and follow these people with all their contact info is in the description. If you don't have it there, it's okay. You can follow Adam at Adam Nutter on Twitter. You can follow Mr. Varghese on Varghese Associate <laughs> PC and that's V-A-R-G-H-E-S-E-A-S-S-O-C-P-C on Twitter. Or you can follow the amazing Kirsten and, and you can do that F-I-J-A National all I should point, on Twitter. I should just point out that's the Fiji account. So my personal opinions that I'm expressing here do not spill over into that if they're not jury related. So. You, know, you know what you sound like, Kristen? You sound like a government lawyer. I know. On a panel. <laughs> that's what they always I'm say. Here. That's their script. Yep. I'm here. I'm not representing the Department of Justice. I'm giving my own personal views. Well, Bullshit. Uh, my, my point being, there are a lot not of you. people I'm who would saying. disagree with me about Trump and and I'm, I'm not tweeting about Trump or anything over there, so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, there we go. Uh, Grace says, Trump will be the boogeyman for Democrats for generations to come. He's the gift that keeps on giving to the DNC. I do think there's some truth to that. I think he's cha he's made a lot, I see a lot of, I see a big difference, I think to your point, yeah, man. Some difference between what I would call liberals and leftists. And liberals are more satisfied with the status quo and just want to stop Trump. Leftists are unhappy with everything and are kind of tired of hearing about Trump because they want, they want their left agenda pushed. And if you're a leftist Democrat, your agenda is not being pushed. It's just not Trump. It's just block Trump, block him. They're not getting the, the minimum wage they want. They're not getting Medicare for all, all the things the left wants. They're not, they're just, they're talking about it. Actually yeah, but those it. are things, I think the left has gotten a lot of what it wants in, in Biden. And I think yeah. that Biden has become, I mean, that is the man who's in office is not the man who campaigned. No. Who well, sold yeah, ever, the country, yeah. <laughs> who sold the country on being a centrist and I'm going to restore decency and normalcy. This dude has been He's extreme. Doing yeah, he's doing Trump-like things on immigration. He's yeah. pulling back on criminal justice reform. The things that he ran on are are so different from what he's doing right now. Well, like, I think we're, we're talking about different things. It's like, oh, you mean you're, you're guy saying guy. he's not doing enough of, of things he <laughs> yeah, promised on? I agree. We're talking about different things, but um, I'm just looking at it like, oh, yeah. the guy was a piece of shit forever. Is being a piece of shit? No way. It's crazy. It's <laughs> yeah. one of the things too. I think we should keep in mind that. Both Biden and Trump, they're no spring chickens and they may not be in the best of health for very long. So it, it may be that time. Well, I, I do believe Trump is the spawn of Satan and will not die. <laughs> right. And so, like, how does a guy who, who eats freaking fucking fried chicken and, and the meals that he lives and is like, man, eh, nothing, you know, COVID almost got him. Right. But after, sort of that. Yeah. Sure that. That was just a devil telling him, listen, I'm still around. You better do my bidding. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty Larry, good. Larry, I do want to address right. you talk about like leftist versus liberal. I think there's like the the, the Demo whatever the Democrat Party is nowadays, it's because it's an amalgam of I think three things now. I think it's just never Trumpers. That's just yes. one portion of them. I think the yep. other portion is the far left progressives who I cannot stand because they're destroying culture and society. That's another giant part. And then you have the like the old school liberal part where they're like, we just care about like stopping war and like drugs were cool. Like, wh net. What happened to yeah. that? Like like the yeah. old school Democrats, like the yeah. 70s yeah. Democrats, like but they're like rare now. Now it's mainly the other two part. Now it's like mainly the other two things taking over. But and the right is just old school conservatives. Who, who, who really just, just right who just no who just who cuck to the narrative like, again like michael mallet has a great uh <laughs> quote right he goes the, the, uh, uh, the gop is just uh progressives driving the speed limit that's all they are you know that's so that's them now and then you have some other people on the right who are just like a little more maybe like 
value driven, but like they still kind of suck. There's like two good people on the right, and everyone loves. But Adam, terrible. you have never Trumpers across the spectrum. No, for yeah. sure. But you know, right, you have sure. tons of conservative. For sure. You know, right wing who who are never Trumpers. No, you got sure. middle of the roaders who are never Trumpers. For sure. You know, I myself am a never Trumper. No, for sure. Right? So I I think the left really breaks that down more so than the never Trumper. I feel like is more prevalent on that side than the other sides. Is my point. Yeah, I think a lot a lot of Republicans, particularly neocons, have become almost Democrats. A lot of neocons they just want have their Democrats. policies instead of the other. Yes, war. <laughs> yes, they just want war. They want war. Yes. I mean, yeah. you see that now. War and cracking down on social media and right, cracking yeah, all down the, on women's you know, health care and to things stop. like that. Yeah, they just want war, and both sides love war. We see that right now with the uh, Ukraine-Russia thing, right? You have the, both people on the right and left being like, no, we should do war. <laughs> and we're like, maybe we don't do that, though, because that's bad, right? And they're like, nah, war. <laughs> and I give credit to Trump. Listen, I, I'll give it as much as I dislike him and, and think he was a terrible leader. I think, listen, he didn't, he didn't drop bombs on anybody. Well, he did, but he didn't. He did. He did. Less than others. He did, but he but didn't. Less than others. Uh, he did continue, continue the drones. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. He did continue the drones. Yeah. Trump didn't do. He didn't start any new wars. Give That's him that. true. He right. didn't end a thing, though. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm going gonna, gonna to give both Biden and Trump a little bit of credit here. Both. Yeah, Biden pulled out. Trump did, Congrats. Trump did negotiate the Afghan pullout. He did negotiate it. That's true. He did negotiate it and make it and start it. So I'll give him credit for that. And Biden pulled out. Yeah. Terribly, but he did pull out. There's no good way so, to do it. I yeah, don't think. I agree. I mean, with take that. our shit back. That. Probably would have been number one. Like take the stuff with us right, and then yeah. leave. That no, was what I would have done. I would have liked that. Yeah, you know, let's pack up the cool stuff and let's go. <laughs> all things considered, I'm a little surprised that it happened at all. So I'm kind of like ready to call. I it am in. too. Actually, like, surprised. It yeah. I'm not happy the way it happened. No way. But it's happened. And I have to give you're right. I got to give Biden credit. By the way, that's the only good thing Biden's done in his presidency. And can I tell you the coolest thing Trump's done in his presidency? The coolest thing. He made it a felony to hurt animals. And I was like, yeah, you get it. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, here we okay, go. But, I didn't even know that. Why, why can't we hurt animals? He you want to kill our dog? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, he but <laughs> you probably I think you guys were against government, big government. I think that's big government. Yeah. Uh, Killing your dog? The- <laughs> how, how, did, how did Trump <laughs> make it a felony to hurt I'm animals? Sure they made a, I'm pretty sure they made like a federal, I'm pretty okay. sure, like a, like a federal law. Like, he was like, either, I'm sure. either did it or he was trying, but like where in the Constitution is the federal government authorized to do that? Don't know. Right. But I remember that was the there, federal right? government should not exercise police yeah. power. Right. And so that's that's a whole other larger. And that's that I wish that were true. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Don't hurt uh, dogs. Grace says she <laughs> says Trump made it a seven year sentence he did, he did to abuse an animal. I told you. Yeah. Wasn't Grace lying. I knew it was in here somewhere. I have a lot of brain cells yeah, there, but I knew it was right around here Adam. somewhere. It was yeah. there. I love it. I, I love it. Excellent. Well, so so let me then, if I could, go to the, the last piece, which Ben, you're talking about with right now, which is gun control. Um, He's looking up the Trump animal thing for sure. <laughs> gun, gun control is a thing that drives me crazy because as we. I'm have sorry. To, I think that's it, a terrible bill. I just looked at it. All I know is the animal like, part. It could be more. <laughs> I mean, federalizing this stuff, this should be prosecuted at the state yeah. level. Exactly. I mean, this is a terrible law. Whatever. Don't hurt animals. <laughs> I, I agree with that. I love dogs. I I absolutely adore dogs. I, but at the same time, it's like there's a. This is something that's, that's going to get challenged, exactly. and under this regime, you know, under this thing, is going to be like, how is this a federal crime? You know, okay, right? you know what there is? It's like it's like that thing of like. Um, I, I, Look, if you if you shoot an animal on federal property, fine, right? But like. I'm, I'm trying to understand how it's this just is one of the, it's one a of federal like, crime. Okay, you know how like uh, I'm against the death penalty, right? Because because for sure the government has put to death innocent people, 100 percent, right? Yep, I am too. But, but yep. if a pedophile gets caught, we should kill that guy, around, like on the spot, no, right? Like, absolutely right, not. Right, I don't. I don't. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't approve of pedophiles. But when was the last time anyone escaped from death row? I I think it's happened maybe once in my entire lifetime. I don't know. And they were quickly apprehended. So I, I will, even in cases where I have a strong uh, dislike, to put it mildly, of someone's actions, I will argue that we should not be um, basically giving the government the power to murder. Oh, wait, you're right. Can I let me rephrase what I was saying? Because you are right. Sure. I meant, I'm sorry. Okay. I meant to say 
as a community, we should kill that guy on the spot. And I'm, I, I was serious. I meant to say that. I just forgot <laughs> okay. to say that part. I'm serious. I, I'm sure we should be yeah. like, well, they that's... to the guy. Like, put him through a trial, right? Put him through a trial. And they go, no, we have enough evidence. And then just to turn him loose and not And then I just beat him to him. death with my bare hands, right? That's a good, yeah. I think that's yeah. fair. We as a community okay. do it. Okay. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I, 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 don't, like, I don't like the government executing anybody because I don't because the government says someone's a pedophile I don't believe the government so I think they just decided that's a political enemy they just called him a pedophile I, I don't believe now community and you find him maybe the issue is now Adam yeah. maybe you, you should be able to you know they'll arrest you I guess because you killed somebody but then they'll go why'd you do it oh he need to kill him okay you're out thanks yeah it was because I killed the pedo <laughs> they're like yes. we get it high five I get a high five <laughs> exactly, that's like my... yes. and and if you go to a jury trial your jury is most likely going to have at least one sympathetic person. I think. It happened before. They just, they just need to know that. <laughs> sympathetic they are, towards who? The, towards the, yes. the, the person, person who beat the pedophile to death. Yeah, yeah. Of, accused of assaulting or killing a pedophile. It's happened before. I've seen people. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. They're going to have there's, more than one sympathetic yeah, person. There's actually a case. I I can't remember where it was, but uh, a man who had been molested by a priest as a child, as an adult, wanted to basically go get get the person who had sexually abused him to at least admit what he did and the person wouldn't and he got a little emotional and hauled off and hit like an elderly priest and was prosecuted for assault and hit he admitted it he testified he admitted it he said he shouldn't have done it he wouldn't put himself in a situation where he would get that emotionally wound up again but his jury didn't they uh, acquitted him of one charge and I think they hung on the other charge and wow. basically we're like yeah you shouldn't it. have done that you kind of know that is yep. putting you in prison for three years gonna make this right. situation better probably not they they probably didn't know it was three years I think that was Who, on, on who's the guy yeah. David Le, oh fuck it's not LaFleur that's a that's a no that's a fake name from it's always sunny Philadelphia but uh the guy who shot the uh his his kids molester on camera. It's famous. It's like the the, the karate instructor. Oh, I remember kid. that guy. And yeah, as yeah, he was yeah, getting yeah. transported between things, he was at the phone booth pretending to make a phone film. call. And, yeah, and turns around, and boom, right in the head. He didn't get. It, I don't think any time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, I I remember that. Did he yeah, have a jury that. trial or did he I just? Don't they were just remember. like, yeah, we're not prosecuting this. I, he might have went to try. Might have went to try. I don't. I honestly don't remember. It was I, the eighties and I wasn't alive. But I, the story <laughs> was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do remember that one. Let me grab a, a story from Sam. Sam says the guy who robbed my professor and then shot her and dumped her body did it while wearing an ankle monitor. They found a notebook with him planning. The appellate court reduced his sentence. Her name was Professor um, uh, Edlin Chun, RIT, and in my opinion, the New York justice system failed her memory. He then goes on to say, I hate the idea of state executions, but when things like this happen, my heart wants something different from getting three hots and a cot. And I gotta say, I understand his emotion. Yeah, me too. And if it was my, someone I loved or cared about, I'd want them dead too. Um, I'm still against, the death penalty. Yeah. Even yeah. though I would, I would be a hypocrite to be forward. If it was someone I loved, I would be a hypocrite, and I'd be like, well, I want him dead, right? With that in mind, I, I'm glad that I can't, yeah, use my emotion yeah. to make that happen. If that makes yeah. any sense. And one thing that I, I also kind of find interesting is, we all understand that sort of on a internal level. I think. Right. But then you look at, at people like um, Botham John's brother, who it wasn't a death penalty case, but the cop who shot his brother when she went into the wrong apartment, he came out and said, I don't want you to have any time at all. And that's something that's so like, mm. how could you possibly want that? But I, I think about those people and I think, you know, in death penalty cases, is there is there any way for someone to say, you know, like make ahead of time uh, so, some sort of, I don't know if you call it an ethical will or some sort of statement ahead of time saying like, if I got killed in this way and death is an option for the person who shot me, can I, can I say that I don't want that? Cause that's something crime that isn't, that's like the minority crime isn't against you. Yeah. The crime is against the state. <laughs> right? No. <laughs> I understand um, that's that, what the state says. Correct. Yes. <laughs> right. 
the state says the crime's not against you. <laughs> yes. The right. crime's against the state. They don't we're going to prosecute. Yeah. Right. I reject that. I reject yes, that. Yes, I'm with you, but you know you know right. where I'm going yeah. with that. Let me let me grab another comment. It's kind of off topic, but I, it's on topic too. Sandra is talking about some serious stuff. She goes, solutions for the TikTok car thefts by use by youths that have become a widespread problem affecting many of us on daily basis. I don't know what this is. Like, there's there's like a TikTok, TikTok challenge, friend. steal a car challenge type oh, thing. So the kids are doing it to show off. Oh, so if someone like steals my Bronco, I'll such. kill you where you stand. Just for the record, anyway, out there, if you steal my Bronco, I'll kill you. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Maybe that's the solution, Sandra. <laughs> or people having guns. We've covered this already. And, a, and you've got your TikTok guy watching you and you get shot live on TikTok. Maybe that is the answer. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but no, it's, it's a serious problem. That, that, that kind of crime of people taking stuff and i think you're finding particularly younger people feeling like to your point earlier adam stuff doesn't matter right i don't care if i take your stuff you just you got a car i don't doesn't matter if i take your stuff why are you so mad you're rich anyway because you own a car or whatever that type of thought process and then TikTok it could be anything but social media right making it okay like it's okay because other people are doing it so clearly it's okay it's just a joke that i stole your car it's a gag that i burned your house down or whatever is the thing that i did it's a joke that i stole stuff from your you know your mom and pop store it's just so, so i could to do a t cool TikTok prank or whatever how do we yeah. deal with that is that even a thing it is a thing i googled and and one uh, article <laughs> i found um Let's see, I don't know where this was, but the, uh, oh, it looks like, yeah, Chicago, Cook County Sheriff Tom Dart said their most prolific offender was 11 years old. So that kind of yep. complicates <laughs> things because you can't treat an 11 year old like no, a 23 year old. Definitely is hard. No, you're right, for sure. But uh, Larry, I'm going to go back to what I said about an hour ago how we handle this. Let people defend their property rights. That's it. You let people handle it. Like yeah. if you're an adult, yeah, don't kill a child for sure. But like, if you're, if you're an adult stealing a car, hey man, whatever happens to you happens to you. That's your decision. You're an adult. You know the consequences. The cops shouldn't well, be, you know, like I mean, if you can defend yourself, right? I mean, it's it's a problem. Right? A lot a lot of people who I mean, to be forward, I did some things I shouldn't have done as a kid, and in theory, I may have stolen a car with my friends, perhaps in theory. I'm not saying that happened. I'm saying someone like me. Sorry, right, right. Statue of limitations is run. No, don't. Oh, was that me. right? Hey, hypothetically. Okay, then yes, I definitely <laughs> stole a car then. Uh, so, okay, so yes, yeah. then I'm fine. So, and I was like 17. So, I mean, that you know, well, should I, look, not that I shouldn't have been shot or whatever, but I was a kid, 17, I was a kid. I was stupid. I would never do that now. I was, mm -hmm trying to be cool with my friends. I was doing stupid yeah, for stuff. Sure. No, I get right? it, for sure. I it's, think, it's, it's one of those things, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go. I was just gonna say, I think part of the problem is that we, the way our legal system is set up right now, when we think someone did something bad to me, our immediate reaction is to hurt them. And I'm not sure that's the best way to deal with a problem like this. We would, uh, we would, we should ideally be looking for something to make them think about what they did and think about why it's a bad idea and how and make them have to make up for it by mm -hmm. you know perhaps working or doing some sort of restitution I like or art. i do something okay. like that we we need to expand our um vision of how to deal with this beyond just like hitting someone back when they hit us kind of thing no, I like the idea of somehow they've got to pay you back somehow i, I yeah. think that's a much better form of justice then then just let's put them into but again if the crime is against the state it doesn't matter right if the crime is against you yeah, yeah. then it matters and the, the crime is yeah. I mean, the, the, what i can't stand is people say all the time well he got justice what happened he got whatever five years in jail yeah, yeah but i still lost my car yeah right. so how's that yeah. justice yeah, that's what i was gonna say yeah. Yeah. and that's it's a lot of time for a car it's a lot of time for a car larry if, if, if saying, we, whatever if, right if, if we go like like you said, I was a seventeen year old kid stealing a car, and like I totally get like yeah, you, like, we're I'm still dumb. I'm thirty six. Like I, you know, it's, it's like I get it, but but like also at the same time, let's say you're watching your car get stolen. You don't know how all these people are. Stealing. You're just in like oh that's my pro that's my work truck. I'm not thinking like this kid might be seventeen. He might not be. You're like I need to get fucking stop this. <laughs> like it, it's so it's not black and white. It's so gray. Yeah. Like you know, it really saying? isn't. 
Like there's, it, it's hard it to tell the gray. difference That's between a 17 really year old and an yeah. 18 year old. But for me, I'm going to, I'm going to daringly go out there and say this. If an 11 year old steals my car, I'm not shooting them. Even no, if well, I have my gun again, I be. said, you probably shouldn't shoot a child. I understand <laughs> yeah. that. That's not what I'm like, saying. No, but, but, Some but, of them, but I like, like what you're saying yeah. though, Kirsten, uh, Kirsten, what you're saying, which I like is, all right, some 11 year old steals my car, right? Maybe I have a gun, maybe I don't, but I decide to not shoot the 11 year old. I try to stop him. If he's faster yeah. than me, then I don't stop I'm him. If try I'm faster than him, then I stop later. him. Their picture yes, might be on the social point. media while I try and find out which of my neighbors but the next is the thing parent. Is, the 11 year old yeah. probably has parents. Yeah. Right? So shouldn't those parents. You beat up the dad. I agree. You, you fuck that dad up. <laughs> was it going you're like, there? I, I, I want to do this to your child, but I saved it for you. <laughs> you know, I have glasses. I'm not nearly as into fighting as you are. These things were pricey. <laughs> All I'm saying though is that maybe if I, if I, it's my work truck to your point, Adam, this is my work yeah. truck. Yeah. If I lose a day of work, hey, pop, that mom, means something. you got to yeah. pay me yeah. for my day of work that I lost because your and, dumb kid stole my car. And we need a better way to do that than, oh, you have to file a lawsuit because it's yes. just not worth it in right. most it's, cases. It's, the it, amount it, it, it how would long cost it you to get justice right. that way would be, it would be a negative economic transaction for you because you'd spend more trying to get back what you were owed Absolutely, but we, we just need to have i i think that's where we kind of need to look for better solutions that aren't necessarily focused on the government and that's not a we can fix this in the next you know six months kind of thing but i i appreciate the commenter's frustration because there are a lot of real problems that 100%. don't have an evident solution that way Absolutely. I, I completely get that. Uh, Senator goes on to say that uh, shop shopping stores don't need a lawsuit to get restitution from shoplifters. So maybe we follow that model, right? Oh, right. Maybe that's the model we follow. Oh, we know why. Right? That's criminal, that's model. right? And then it goes through the criminal thing. And then, and then the judge goes, you got to pay restitution. It's like a whole, that's why yeah. probably, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And, yeah, and the, the other problem with like 11 year olds in the criminal system is they're in juvenile court it's not considered a crime. It's a youth offense kind of thing. Mm -hmm. the, the rules are a bit different in most, I will say in most states. Um, and the, the privacy issues for children are different. So oh, sure. you right. might not, right, right. I, I, don't, I don't know that there's a evident way that that would work in the case of, of a minor, but it, it could right, maybe. Well, well, let me let me uh, do a little bit of admin if I could here, guys. If you like this show and you're enjoying it, then please retweet it on Twitter now. I really need you to do it. Please do it. If you haven't liked the liked the show yet, what is wrong with you? Like the show. You've been watching it. Click the button. What do you got a problem with your finger broken? I don't care. Use your nose. F click the like button. It doesn't matter. You should do it. It's important. Please do it. It does matter. And please follow these guys. I put all their information in the description. You just want to follow them on Twitter. It's easy. Adam Nutter. Varghese, Associ PC, and FIJA National, all on Twitter, follow them all. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for, for giving me so long this evening. I appreciate it. Anything you want to say for us to wrap this up? Adam, anything? Uh, yeah, come see me do comedy. I don't talk about politics, I promise. I just, just, I just <laughs> there we told, go. Just, just yes, jokes. do that. So come on out. <laughs> come on out to that. Um, check out my two podcasts. Um, one is called The Porcupine, if you do care about politics. Actually, Larry, i got to get back on. I haven't been on since like the first episode, I think. <laughs> so, so come back on uh, The Porcupine. That's available everywhere. YouTube.com slash Adam Nutter. And I have a comedy podcast that's absolutely no politics it's called the cult of us i do with the great neil wood or as larry says nobody but i do <laughs> that's available youtube.com slash cult of us and come see me on the road i'm doing the um uh, uh delaware lp convention april 6th it's at the blackbird community center i think i'm doing the Merrill one the day after that uh i'm uh, the, oh, i still have your cult of us hoodie that you gave oh, me oh we I have to give have you it. i have to give you a new I one i gotta wear it again we i have, haven't worn it in a while stop uh, yeah but our logo's I different i guess i guess a new one i guess a new one uh okay, there we go. come see me on the road uh with Robbie the fire burns team the end of this month march 24th and march 25th in steamboat springs colorado that's gonna be a good time uh so yeah check out my shit. here we go here we go kirsten anything you want to talk about before we leave Absolutely. Uh, Larry mentioned <laughs> earlier in this conversation that he had served on jury duty twice. I can't remember if he mentioned that he was a jury selection consultant uh, for a while. But if you are interested in um, hearing how that can help you get on a jury as a fully informed juror, 
the fully informed jury association will have an hour and 15 minutes i think uh, chatting with him about those things on Next wednesday wednesday march 22nd noon eastern um and i didn't quite get it all on the website before this but in the morning if you go to fija.org and look up at the top you will find that the uh, thing to click to either register for zoom or we'll be um live streaming it on facebook as well there we go absolutely the man himself vin well i got a couple things to say one try not to get out of jury duty i think it's critical and uh if you are of the bent of Kristen, please uh I, I i i love what you're doing um kirsten i'm sorry i called you Kristen. Kristen. Um, could i tell you a secret it's kirsten kirsten <laughs> yes, yes. She, 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 she corrected me early on. Kirsten. Sorry. Sorry, Kirsten. Yes. You know, it's, and you can imagine people mess up my name. You I know, bet. I especially the guys have. from Staten Island. You know, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but and the other thing I want to say is, you know what? Biden bad, Trump bad. We need Larry Sharp in office. <laughs> there we go. I don't, I I don't want Larry Sharp in office because I think it will do bad things to his soul. Uh, yeah, it might. It's possible. You're right. It's good. So, yes. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for watching for my audience. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Uh, I will be back on tomorrow with my radio show, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Sharp Way Radio out of Rochester, New York. I will see you all.